Right, so uh, we will go uh, switch, stunty, then Alex. Sure. Oh, yeah. cool. And then you can defend your Nintendo Wanna. <laughs> Is Dan coming on? No, I don't think so. He <clears throat> says, call me again in four minutes. Oh, did he? Well, he's put on the, the private chat. Call me again in four minutes, eBay auction. So I don't know what he's, he's buying a bloody record, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Signed, yeah. signed record. Signed record of. Oh, here you go, ready. So Is he ready? Is he? Yeah. <coughs> That'd be good. <laughs> Yeah, haven't had Dan on in a while. Old Colin. Colin's not on, is he? He's uh, at church He's or something. He's at church, yeah. Mm. Got to call him anyway, just to be annoying. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, Dan, you alright? Yeah, sorry, I had to hang up on you because I was in the middle of um, claiming a um, a record online. Yes, I, I was right. <laughs> I knew yeah. it was right. I wasn't sure what? if you were coming uh, on tonight. What? No, no, I didn't even know it was. I just had dinner. I, I, this, this record is currently listed on eBay and elsewhere about 400 quid. I've got it for twenty-four pounds. Yes. So nice. are you going to sell it on or just keep it? I don't know yet. <laughs> that could pay for your switch, mate. I already has. Instead of scalping. What record is it? It's Persian Pitch by Panda Bear. Never heard of them. First edition. This is. It's ten years old. Um, it was one of the Animal Collective. It's out of print at the moment. It probably will depreciate. It probably have a reissue at some point. But yeah, man. I've never heard of them. Yeah, I've. Well, I've, I've, I've Back in the day, I've had stuff where it's like, oh, do you want this CD? And it's like, uh, no, I'll pass. And then you find out later on that it's like, oh, that's completely out of print. Yeah. And that was one of only a certain... Because I remember once, one of the things I'll always kick me, always make me kick myself, is um, ODB's last album, which was never mm -hmm. officially released. I saw yep. a promo copy of it, boxed with the proper case, cover, everything for it. How up much? in London for six quid and I'd spent all my money and I was like I'll pick that up next time and then he died like literally about a yeah. couple of days later and that album was never officially released I was fucking livid and like I've never seen it on eBay or anywhere either I'm looking for you now mate it's ODB I've, I've, yeah it was I've, I ended up getting like a, like the music digitally for it yeah, like yeah, yeah someone yeah. you're big on collecting then Dan are you um Records, yes. Bands I like. Yeah. I um, I have a, I have a, I've, I've, only the last year I started buying vinyl. I've bought some stupid things. I've, I've imported from the states and whatnot. It's making a massive comeback, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm yeah. Massive. It'll never be the same as what it was, but no. Well, I've, I've, well one of the prized possessions I got recently was around Christmas. It was a, a signed copy of um, Gorilla by Super for Animals, and I got that all in plus postage and packaging for about seventy eight pounds. Wow. Um, a mint cop, well, a fairly good copy over here goes for about 120, and this is signed as well. So you're yeah. looking at least 150, what to 200 pounds. Wow. So yeah, all good, man. Do you I go, to, do do you go to the record shops in Brighton because of um, I went there the other week, didn't I? And mm, there's yeah. one, there's one in the lanes that was absolutely rammed. Well, that resident, yeah. I think it is resident. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I resident. Be, really overpriced for my liking, but they, oh, yeah. I couldn't it believe how there. busy it was in there. Yeah. It, it is typically overpriced, but at least by about four or five pounds. So um, you, you can do better if you shop online and look about. But if you want to go for, if you want to go for, if you want to go and get something obscure and that you're probably sure that you've got it or like a new release, just go there and you're guaranteed. Um, they're really, really good guys in there as well. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've found that uh, an advanced sampler promo for that album, but it's just like one of those cardboard ones that they used to give around the. <laughs> The record labels, yeah. but this one was like a full-on, actual, proper made CD, like an advance. Well, yeah, I, I can't see it on eBay at the moment. Unless, yeah, unless it was I... called a Sun. It was called a Sun Unique. The album. Old dirty bastard in eBay. See if it likes that. Is that uh, the one? Old dirty bastard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. Shimmy, shimmy, yah, oh, shimmy, yam, shimmy, yay. Yeah, it's a funny, really, isn't it, when people die? It's like my mate, he said, I've made a killing. He said, I've had millions of George Michael records for years. I can actually get some money out of the buggers now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's terrible. So he said, I'm yeah. waiting for Madonna now. <laughs> he said, I can cash Jesus. Rather than the person with a signed glitter record, he's probably screaming. Right, shall we um, start anyway? Yes. Yeah. Um, you should be getting audio, Clarky. I think. It's your shit internet. Um. 
He's on BT like yeah, myself. Yeah, it's coming through on my speakers if I don't mute my um, Twitch, so... I'm on BT. I have no problems at all with BT since I've been... Uh, yeah, no, it's the router, the router I'm having problems with. It just keeps it's dropping a... the Wi-Fi. Oh, new new router is needed. Anyway, should we start? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, switch Paul, Dan, and Alex. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And a three, and a two, and a one. Hello and welcome to Mojo Radio, episode four hundred and twelve for Sunday, the twelfth of February, two thousand and seventeen. I'm your host, Mark Webb, Gamer Tag, Pearson ID, and Steam ID, Webby317. And joining me on this fine evening is... Good evening or morning, whichever time you're listening to this, it's Sensei Switch. I apologise for my bum, but I've had a roast dinner this evening. It's number one Stumpmaster. Um, hello, it's my dad. I'm a bit perplexed by that last introduction. <laughs> And I'm Alex. Um, I don't really have a gamer tag, but I've got a YouTube <laughs> channel, which is Nintendo Arcade. Oh, man. Yeah. Why have I invited someone who doesn't play Xbox onto this podcast? <laughs> hey, I, do, I used to play a lot of Xbox. I just haven't bought the latest one. Uh, so, for, the, for, for those of you that don't know, Alex is an avid uh, retro Nintendo collect, collector. He's got a lot of it. retro machines, apparently. Uh, that's it. I've seen some of your cool videos online. Yeah. And uh, you were very upset at our show last week because we were slagging <laughs> off the Switch. So you demanded to come on to redeem Nintendo. Yeah, I do. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of hate going around at the moment. So we, we've also got Dan, who's also a massive Nintendo <laughs> fanboy. So we've got two of you yeah. this week. And so, me. Yeah. So you need to defend Every... Nintendo's honour. We, we will. We don't have to defend anything. We yes, just you have do. to tell you how like it is. Because yeah, Nintendo we'll drop, we'll are now turning into off. mobile phone <laughs> fucking <laughs> money grabbing fucks. First they bring out Mario for the phone, and then they bring out this Fire Emblem game on the phone as well. Yeah. And um what about Screen Enix or Screenix and Final Fantasy? Shut the fuck up. Yeah, but yeah, but they're not a, a hardware. Yeah, but, yeah, no, so, if they out, so if they bought out for the Xbox, would you be moaning then? Because they'd be making money. Hey, then, I'm not they? moaning because you know I get to play them on my phone. I don't have to buy a Nintendo you're, console. You're so screwed. Great. Right. Maybe this week. You're no, really so if doing. they brought out Fish Mario the on, the, on the Xbox, that would be like a win-win situation because then you won't have to buy one of their awful consoles. <laughs> so you know, it's great. And you yeah, get to hold a normal yeah, controller. Whole, yeah, but you've been moaning about all the games are so bad. Would you then play them because they're on the Xbox? The only games I like uh, are Super Mario. The ones that Kirk buys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, the ones that Kirk buys. And that's about it. I mean, I've got a, I've got a Wii U, and I think the only games I've played on that is Mario Kart, Mario 3D World, uh, and you some did, retro you did games. Play, um, you did play Monster Hunters with us, even though you were yeah, shit. That was fucking crap. Oh, didn't, you, um, also, didn't you also buy a mini a mini NES just before Christmas? Yeah, I played it twice. What yeah, about okay. a 3DS? You got a 3DS, Mark? Uh, Leon did have one and then it got broken. Mm. Uh, How did it break? See, with Nintendo, they make a lot of games <laughs> in house, don't they? Microsoft don't. They they sub them out to other third parties. You know, that's the biggest trouble with Nintendo is they take on too much sometimes. I think what they need is third party. I do agree with that point. Um, it just remains to see whether they get it for the new system. I think they will because the R and D department used to make a lot of games for the 3DS is now merged with the main console department. So a lot of the 3DS games, hopefully, we're going to see on the new console. Monster um, Hunter. Fingers yeah, exactly. Hey. Well, if they hey. release a Pokemon game on the Switch, then they'll sell millions of the things because people exactly. are nuts over that. And yeah. there's rumours there is that they are going to release a Pokemon. It might be a cut down version of what some of the other ones have been, but how can, I don't it, know. How can it be a cut down version though? Like it's a home console that you can take on the move. It's like going to yeah. be the most powerful portable system in the world. Mm. Yeah, it won't mm. be a cut down version. The cut down version would be on your phone. Mm. You know, like you've seen with Fire Emblem. I mean, that's been a big hit for them. But I won't play because I've already finished Fates. No, I just um, looked at it and was like, "Oh, uh, a mobile phone game." Nope. Yeah. There's there's one of them coming from for the Wii U, isn't? Uh, sorry, the Switch. Sorry, a Fire Emblem, isn't there? Yeah, we haven't, one, yeah. we haven't had one on the Wii U. Yeah, but it's not a, a proper one. It's uh, a Musu. Oh, 
like oh, Samurai it? Warriors and Dynasty Warriors. Oh, is it like, one of those? Yeah, it's like Hyrule Warriors. Yeah, like Hyrule Warriors. Yeah. Warriors. Like yeah. Hyrule Warriors. It'd be yeah. awesome. That was an awesome game. As long as it's got the Japanese voices with it, I'll be quite happy because I haven't touched well, the You can buy a Japanese game. copy now, Switch, because it's um, not region non- <coughs> yep. Yes, but it all depends what your system's set to. If your system's set to English, it will come out in English. That's, that's what's mm. pissed me off with Zelda. I can't actually play the game how I want to play it. You don't understand well, they Japanese, that, though. Have they said that you can't change that, then? Yes, for some reason. It's, I don't know why. It's it's Nintendo. They, they, for some reason, can't give us what every other developer's been doing for the last 10 years mm. and give you... Yeah, I mean, you are, that is a minority amount of people that would want to play with Japanese speech. Oh, agree, I agree, mean, but yeah, a lot... I mean, they're going to make a lot of money out of that, are they? Just because of... No. Um, but I know there was a huge, like, there was a deal about it with Fire Emblem, and again with Zelda. A lot of people were upset when they found out they couldn't actually do that. Yeah. I don't know. It remains to be seen. Anyway, to see. so, are you, anyway, are you guys excited for the Switch then? I mean, yeah. yeah. I've played it. I've actually been on one. Oh, so give us the lowdown <laughs> of a physical Switch then. Well, it was a fantastic day. My mate actually won. Um, some competition tickets and it was in London he's up from up north so he couldn't make it so he said that you have Alex you're a big Nintendo fan so we went to a Hammersmith Apollo and it was absolutely fantastic I haven't been in Hammersmith Apollo since I saw Iron Maiden this is a few years ago now <laughs> um, and it was just brilliant uh, they laid on loads of food free fish and chips and all the games were there um, and it was quite quiet, actually. We went on the Sunday. We heard that Saturday was going to be was really busy, so we made sure we were in the queue for Zelda straight away. Um, we only had to wait about half an hour to play Zelda. And, and, um, and, and is it good? And, yeah, well, it's all locked. You couldn't, you know, I was trying to press the home button, just try and see what the hub was like, but you couldn't do that. It was all locked. They're kind of like demo pieces, you know. Um, yeah, I went straight into the combat. Other people kind of wandered around trying to see any puzzles and stuff. I just went straight into the combat, wanted to see how the kind of slow motion effect with the bow and arrow work. That was really cool. I mean, it looks absolutely stunning. And when she showed you the map, you just thought, bloody hell, this, this is a huge game. But, you know, if, the only thing I'm worried about, is it a huge game that's empty? Is there going to be a lot in it? And are we going to lose the kind of really cool level designs, the dungeons that we had in Wind Waker, which were awesome? And that's what I like Zelda for, for the real good puzzle element of the dungeons, mm. you know? So if they can combine that two, <coughs> then they're on for a winner, you know? But as far as I've seen so far, absolutely brilliant. Looks stunning. Plays really well. I love the controller. I played the Joy Grip. So you put the Joy Cons in this grip, the one that doesn't charge up. Um, and that felt really good. It felt really small in my hands. I've got really big hands, really big builder's hands, and it felt really, really good. Um, I also paid on the pad as well. I paid Mario Kart, and I was looking at the screen. The screen on that is unbelievable. So well detailed. Loads of colour. Mm. Looks lovely. I played 1-2 Switch, which, you know, I can see what they're doing with that. They're trying to get their... The Wii market, the casual market, you know, your mums and dads, your nans and granddads, the ones in the home interested in, they're trying to appeal to every kind of console throughout their ages. You know, the NES, the SNES, the Wii, the, it's like a hybrid console, and they're really well, marketing it on that. You know, Well, I mean? Nintendo I, has always been a family thing, like, it has, hence, yeah. like, Famicom, family computer sort of a thing. They've always yeah. aimed for the family market rather than the hardcore sit in mm. your bedroom or wherever, just like gaming. They so want did it to you be play that game where you're jerking off a cow then? We did. I had, a lot of, I had a lot of fun. You can actually feel the milk going oh, through yeah. your hand. Cream in your Oh, oh <laughs> my God. That's just so wrong on so I'm many in. levels. I'm in. Done. You could just see the silhouette of me in the window doing that, couldn't you? Yeah, strangely <laughs> enough, the uh, the lead designer of the Senran Kagura games is quite excited as to how he could actually use them controllers in one of his games. Well, oh, I just bet he is. I've just, <laughs> uh, I've just played that game on the 3DS. That is totally out there, isn't it? Loads of boobs. I, I um, do think they're missing a trick, though, with that, that, that game. They should have been bundling it with every single Switch. Um, yeah, but if you can see what's going into the controllers, though, I mean, there's a lot of tech in there. Yeah, I mean, true. 
you know, it's not just you're getting two controllers as well. How many controllers do you get with the Xbox One? Dude, you know, that's only one. Con- you can't say that's two controllers it is because two controllers. you need to hold them both to play like a normal game. What's a normal game, Webby? Like a yeah, game where normal- you need two <laughs> thumbsticks. <laughs> Not well, where you're jerking game. off a fucking cow. I mean, yeah, come on. Where is your... You can play two players. So you've got Mario Kart. I hope it's a good cow. Two so two of you can have... Like a Frisian or something, is it? Yeah. yeah, but like, if you want to do that, you only have one thumbstick and four buttons. It's like, a, if you take the Joy-Con off, it's like a, it's the size of an NES controller. That's fine. Do you have a problem with that? No. Yes, too small. Web- Webby, <laughs> when, when we when we come over to yours for the announcement we're going to bring up in a minute, you wait. You're going to be wanting to jerk my cow off. Ah, uh, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> no, no. I mean, admittedly, it is cool. Yes, yes, you can't yes. say it's bundled with two controllers because well, it's only there, one. Webby, you? You've got the options to have the pro control. This is what I don't get. The yeah, so then you have there. to pay. Like, why doesn't it just come with a normal controller? It if does. you have that, if you're an oh, option, you... like. I don't get it. Well, you got you it comes get... with the two Joy Cons, right? If you want a, the Pro Controller, you have to buy that separately, of course. But <laughs> the option is there to have that. You know, they're giving you those. I, I options. think it's genius. Yeah. I you know you don't get it, Webby. The about. Yeah, I don't get it either. Uh, What's wrong, Webby? I mean, Come they're, on, they're selling up. games where you have to fucking <laughs> cradle the controller as a baby, and oh. I'm like, what the fuck? Just is like this real shit? life. Yeah, but that, that's not yeah. appealing to me either. I mean, that's, that's, that again is appealing to the whole, uh, you know, the whole mass market, you know. Whole... Uh, I mean, from, from from my point of view, you know, why, why do I, I don't want to, I don't want to get a Switch for Zelda because I can get that on my Wii U because I already own a Wii yeah. U. Um, I don't want to take the controller on the go because I don't do public transport like yeah. Dan. So again, yeah. work, though. That, so what did you, but what did yeah, you I, want from Nintendo? What would have made you happy? If, what, what, I don't what know. I, I just be? don't think those. I don't think Nintendo consoles really suit me anymore because no. But you if know, they, and, and, if and I can just... admit that you know because I like to play games that are more realistic and with a mm. normal controller. Realistic. Yeah, realistic. <laughs> what, Halo 5 is realistic. I didn't say it. I'm talking about Halo. <laughs> the thing I, is, as soon I, as you I get mean, the I, high I, graphics, like, you only want more. If I had more. kids, then yeah, I'd probably get a Nintendo Switch because it's great for kids. You know, but as yes, a really soon, grown mate. man, I don't think so. But for me, you're constantly looking for the latest graphics all the time and not about the gameplay. Nintendo have said that. You know, if they bought out a a console that was matching the PS4 and Xbox, people still just want the latest graphics, the bigger graphics all the time. You're not thinking about the gameplay Mm -hmm. at all. To me, I love new games and I love retro games and I love all the arcade games as well. I play the whole lot. You know, I don't just play one. And... For me, it's, it's a good combination of the lot, you know. Yeah, but then with I Nintendo, I yeah. mean, you, you, you say right, that, sorry. and I, you know, they, they do do good games, but it's like, right, another Zelda, another Mario, another Mario Kart, maybe a Mario Tennis, you know, you kind of like, it's the same yeah, games, just No, you can't say that about game. Zelda, because every Zelda game's been completely different. They have. Wind Some Waker of them have been better than, than others. Twilight Princesses. Yeah, Sky, Sky, um, Skyward Sword was, wasn't very good, I admit. Who but finished I mean, the Zelda game? I finished, I finished loads. I've finished yeah. the Zelda. I've finished you know Wind what? Waker yeah. about four times. Never finished yeah. the Zelda game. Sad as it may I mean, be. It I, might be the the past. I think that, that was the last good one, Wind Waker. Mm. I haven't enjoyed the other one since then. But that's... Well, you didn't play... Um... What was the one on the 3DS that was basically between, a love letter? Link, a link Between Two link Worlds. Yeah, I didn't finish that, to, to be fair. Oh, I've not yeah. played that one. I've finished it. Played it. Great. Mm-hmm. It's good, isn't it, Dan? Yeah, going back to it, is, it yeah. um, both Microsoft and Sony already have two very well-established consoles on the market at the moment with user bases in the millions. Mm. Why is someone going to come in and try and muscle in on that no, late in the yeah, game? I agree, Just yeah. the same thing. They needed to do something slightly different and more they interesting. They do. They can't compete with those two. And if you if you really want to be snobbish about graphics, then go and get PC. The games are cheap. Already done it, mate. Yes. Already done it. Alex, this is what you're arguing against. Yeah. There's no point. There's yeah, basically two jokes. 
<laughs> yeah, just do jokes, <laughs> jokes at him, and, it, and, it, and that's it. That's all you can hope to but, cope with this. Webber, you love games, don't you? You love all games. You're a massive gamer. You must yeah. like... You know, but that's why I mean that's why I bought the, the thing is though I'm thinking like more f- like because I I bought a, nin- a Nintendo Wii U because I love games but then I ended up because I have so so little time to game now it just kind of got pushed to the side and never really played it very much mm. and that's what would happen if I bought a Switch and just sit there. Well, the Wii U was a failure. I'm, you know, I'm not. Uh, yeah, but that's some good games, games though. Like... You know, I just never had time to fucking play them. Yeah. So. Yeah, they got a lot of things wrong with the Wii U marketing, name, you name it. It was yeah. wasn't great. Even the even the actual pad looks Fisher Price, doesn't it? When you look at when you feel the new switch in your yeah. hand, you can. This feels like, wow, this is something really special. This is high tech stuff. It feels quality made, and you know, for them to sell it as a kids' unit would be wrong because I wouldn't want my kid playing with my switch. I tell you that now. You know? Oh yeah, fingers all over the screen and that. Yeah. yeah, you know, you drop that. That's, that's gonna yeah. break, I reckon. But yeah, you no. can even own uh, literally just own one console and be basically like end up with a pile of shame and not enough time to play everything mm. you want anyway. Well, they're like well, three that's fucking it. consoles and having a pile of shame. Well, that's it. I mean, you know, I really want a PS4 and I do plan to get one this year. There's some games I want to play mm. like Blood Bowl and XCOM. They're the sort of games I like playing. But... Things though, like. PlayStation, like, just talking about Sony quickly, like, Sony are killing it with the exclusives at the moment. Yeah. You know, if you were on the fence about either getting an Xbox or a PS4 at the moment, I would personally have a hard time justifying the Xbox because of the quality exclusives available on the PlayStation. Mm. I mean, at the moment, you've just had that Neo game come out, which looks fucking amazing. Hey. And, then, and then you've got Near <laughs> Automata next month, which looks fucking brilliant as well. Horizon Dawn. Event. Horizon, yeah. you've got MLB 17, the show, if you're into your baseball. Zero. You What's know? Mass Effect coming out on? Is that coming out on both? That's coming out yeah. on both. Yeah. Whereas on the Xbox, on all you've got is, what, Gears of War and Halo and Forza. Mm. Yeah, see, I like Gears of War. I finished all of them. Yeah, but, but it's not enough, I don't know you know. What... Yeah, well, they have said, uh, well, Phil Spencer or whatever on Twitter has teased that they are getting ready to show off at least one new IP this year, which is pretty cool and interesting. Mm. Plus, you've got Halo Wars next week as well, I think. I haven't I haven't heard anything to that, though. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested in it at all. You know, it looks good, but I'm being a lot a more picky about game, my games now. That- that's coming so, out to die, that is, Halo Wars. That's a strategy game, game, is it? Yeah, yeah. it's an RTS, mm-hmm. yeah. See, I like those sort of games, but <laughs> you don't need a top PC or, you know, the latest Xbox to play those, really, do you? I'm sure well, Switch depends. Could run something like that. And well, it depends how much CPU it's using up, because those games mm. are notorious for being very CPU intensive. You know, mm. I've been playing uh, Warhammer Total War on my PC, and that, you know, I've got a really good PC at the moment, and that kind of like struggles because there's so much going on, on the screen you know so yeah that's yeah, yeah. the unit ai and all the rest yeah. of it, isn't it that's why back in the day i remember with um like the lord of the rings one on the 360 which everyone really loved when it came yeah, out i enjoyed that yeah but you could it could you could only literally have like a handful of units in your army at one time because it couldn't couldn't cope it might well have been. Hold on, I've probably yeah. got it up on the shelf somewhere I'm sure it was conquest wasn't it lord of the rings conquest i don't know so, yeah, I like so with the Switch coming out next month, I mean, it's it, the thing is, it's, it's coming out at a quite a busy month as well because there's a lot of good games coming out on the other consoles. You've got Ghost Recon, you've got Mass Effect, you've got Nier Automata, as we said. Um, a few other games. And the thing with the Switch is, obviously, it's only launching with, like, Zelda's really the only decent game that's coming out on that launch day. Mm. And I know and I know you said, like, people have been moaning that it's got a very, you know, it's not got many games coming out at launch. But, you know, Zelda... You know, it looks awesome, and yeah, that's fair. That is fair enough. But I don't mm. see how they can justify like forty-five quid for Bomberman for fuck's sake. I no. just think that's just yeah, that seems a bit much. That's a bit cheeky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cheeky. Yeah. That'll be bargain basement before you know it. Plus, yeah, I, that's a thirty-pound game at most. Plus, I am. Yeah, but, I, yeah, but Sony I, I do the think though, that, but that's not Nintendo though. That's putting those prices no, on there, I, is no, it? No, no, they're not. That's a, is that a Konami game? Uh, yeah, that's it's off. Yeah, it's being it? published by Konami, though. Yeah, I thought so. It's, there you it's go. not Nintendo's fault, is it, really? 
But, but I do you think know. that the, like, the, the, the Switch to me does look like it's like £50 too expensive. You know, I was quite surprised at that launch price, to be quite mm. honest. Mm. But all, all, all games are overpriced on launch. I mean, look I'm at... I'm talking about the console when... itself. Yeah, but yeah. going back to what you were just saying about yeah. games overpriced, I mean, look at some of the PlayStation games. I mean, The Order, when it came out, that was a £50 game. Yeah, that was which was overpriced. If you buy, if you buy Neo digitally, that's fifty-five quid. Yeah, I wouldn't well, pay yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, but digital is a whole digital is a whole kettle of a different kettle of fish in this country because it yeah. is overpriced in this country anyway. All of the digital market, you know. But the, um, I mean, any console on on release, all games have always been overpriced because basically what you've got is you've got a perfect market. You release release a console, everyone wants to buy a load of games for it just to show their mates, you know, to their mates. You're going to show Zelda off, but you're going to want to show a party game off, so Bomberman or I don't know, you know, creaming the cows. You mm. want something like that. Yeah. You're, you're creaming gonna... the well, cows. Well, the thing is as well, <laughs> not everyone's into games like we are. You know, there's a lot yeah, of yeah. families that just have a console underneath the tape, on, under the TV, and just play it casually now and again. And mm. I think that's what they're appealing to, you know. Not everyone's avid gamers like us mm-hmm. are, you know. And people, people like me that can easily get about two to three hours worth of Zelda on a commute. Yeah. Um, I can't wait. It's going to be great. Yeah, that's that. That's yeah, the battery you'll, you'll lasts that long, mate. And long. <laughs> that was actually paid exactly. for by the train company. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, Southern Rail um coughed up three hundred eighty-one pounds last week to say sorry, um <laughs> for their debacle. So that is my switch money. Nice. Thank you very much, Southern Rail. So are you going to be playing this runway game that's on the video at the moment, Alex? Um, this looks. Runway. It seems very you. It seems very Dan as well, actually. What, what, what console the, is it on? On the Switch. There's this runway game coming oh. to the Switch. What, the one with okay. the two women on the screen? Yeah, man. you have to shake your hips with the controller oh, on your head. That. Yeah, that's a bit <laughs> of Alex. Yeah, yeah. I, I see Alex. <laughs> boot, I can imagine you in this cowboy hat doing playing quick draw. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah, man. Look at that. Well, yeah. I played Arms. I'll tell you, Arms was really, really good fun. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah that looks good as well. So that's basically like a Street Fighter game, but your arms extend out and you can get different attachments for your arms. You get like a rocket launcher that fire off. Your arms shoot out and you can actually, when you push mm-hmm. your arm out, you twist the Joy-Con and your arm will bend around obstacles. So if your other opponent's trying to hide, you can get him from around the corners, jump up in the air. It's a really good, fun game, actually. And you don't have to use the motion controls in that. You can do it with a pro controller. So I think that's going to be a hit, to be honest. With you. Well, they're, really, they're talking really of cool. that. Yeah, talking of that. Pat's making an appearance at Evo, so that's the kind of regard they're oh, putting right. it into. Yeah. This so, guy five. I know that's on the PS4, but that's the sort of game that would be interesting for me. Yeah, perfect that for looks... on the move. That could last yeah. forever. That game, but, like yeah. literally. <clears throat> Have you well, played the... any of them, Switch? Uh, yeah, we, they're, they're so in-depth. I mean, you can literally go into randomly generated worlds for every single piece of your yeah. equipment to upgrade it. It is like ridiculous. like 100 characters on a screen at once as well. I was like, yeah. there's a lot going on. The, the, one, the one game which I think will really work for the Switch is a game that me and my daughter were playing this week, and that's on the GameCube, and that's Animal Crossing. If they bring Ooh. out a Switch, that yeah. would be awesome. Oh, they, yeah. must, they must do, because we haven't had one since the Wii. So we didn't get well, I think the the switch is because I haven't really heard of many new 3DS games for a while, to be honest, since the switch announcement and Pokemon really was the last big one. So because this is obviously like a detachable handheld system, as well as like the home console when it's docked, they will probably move towards it. Like having a lot of of, um, other stuff. No, I don't think they'll ever ditch it. But I think we will see stuff like, hopefully, like Animal Crossing, a more portable type of titles on mm. that as well. I mean, the one thing I was disappointed with with the uh, the presentation, which I thought was poor, um, and I think maybe it's suit with the translation was dire. Um, I was much more interested in the treehouse that was going on afterwards. But I was, you know, I just thought, where's the Metroid? You know, where's where's F Zero? Where's all these yeah. really cool IPs that you've got that you could bring out that would really get people excited? You've got them all in characters in Smash Brothers, which is, I'm a massive fan of. Bring them out. They're obviously not dead, but where are mm-hmm. they? You know. I just think they're lacking the confidence to actually develop them themselves to do them actual justice. I think. 
Mm. Maybe that's like a thought, but yeah, I literally I love F Zero. It was like when I got my Super Nintendo, it was one of the first consoles I got back in the day. Obviously, back one of the best games ever for that system oh, was yeah. with the console Mario World. And then after that, I was like, what else? You know, when you get that new console, yeah. you're like, what else do I want to get? So it was like all oh, F Zero, Super Castlevania, Pilot Wings, and stuff yeah. like that. And F Zero. I didn't expect to love it, but straight away it was like the music, the oh, Mike 7 and everything. It was just awesome. Even the game GameCube version was brilliant where you could upload, you could take your game save into an arcade version and, and mm. play your your game save in the arcade. Was I mean, that the last idea. one, the GameCube, was it? Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. Well, they had Climax on the, on the Game Boy Advance, which only came out in Japan, which right. was really good fun. But it's uh, Jap only. I've got it on the Game, game Boy Advance. Absolutely brilliant game. Yeah, I just remember the GameCube one. It was like 40 cars on the track or something. Yeah, it was, yeah. I used to love those opening laps. It's just pure mayhem. That's a cracking game. But yeah, well, I don't know why I don't bring them out. I mean, that fast racing Neo, which I played, I didn't play the latest one. Was it RMX? I think it's called. It's coming out to Switch. I just found it too brutally hard too quickly. You know, it just ramped up so quickly. It can't, it's so fast. You feel like your eyes are coming out your sockets trying to concentrate <laughs> on the screen. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Did you play it? No, I've, I have can't think of what you're on about, actually. I don't think I've actually seen that one. No, yeah, there's, there's a video of it on our stream at the moment. Um, oh, so right, cool. I'll check it later. Yeah. But yeah, obviously, the other two ones I'm really interested in, um, obviously, the Fire Emblem Heroes, because uh, I do love the Musu titles, and Splatoon, being able to play it with a proper controller, because that was my yes. only bummer with the Wii U, was I was so gutted when I found out you couldn't use the Pro Controller with it, because yeah. I, I'm pretty shit with that Wii U like tablet thing. I am, I am. In fact, we've been playing it tonight, me and Isabella, my mm. daughter. Not really my type of game, but I have got in it for her sake, because she gets stuck. She said, Danny, can you do this level? Right, okay, let's do this level. And I have got into it, and I've got a lot better. But you're right, that motion control. This is another thing about the Wii U, why it didn't do so well with Star Fox. I mean, why didn't they just make that a proper arcade shooter like the first? Yeah, all we wanted was Star Fox, and what we got yeah. was a motion-controlled, like, farce. I know, it was odd. Really odd, I didn't get it. What was the game you took? Sorry, I, I had to disappear then. Mrs. wanted me to find a Fifty Shades of Cock. Talk um, about Splatoon. <laughs> so, oh, right, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I enjoy Splatoon. I don't know why you can't mm. get on with Splatoon. No, no, I've, I've, I have got into it on mm. Switch. Right, okay. It's the controller, mate. Can you not Can you not play Splatoon without with, like, a pro controller? You can, no. but I don't think it's as good, is it? You no, can you play can't, it. You can't. All oh, right, it wouldn't let me at all when I first got it. It was just I literally. Think, yeah, I think you can, but a lot of people said it's. If you get used to the uh, pad, then it is a lot better. But you know, when the camera goes off, you know, you get up and out your seat, the camera goes off at an angle, you're trying to get the camera back. It's annoying, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've never had an issue. Aim by <laughs> holding and waving the actual controller about, didn't you? Yeah. You can turn that off on Splatoon anyway. You do know that, don't you? Yeah, I, I did turn that off, but yeah, I just couldn't find a way to get my um, like pro controller to sync to it. But yeah, that's going to be a massive game, I think, for it. Cool. So last thoughts on the Switch before we move on. Awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. I've got the day off. I have. Yeah, you got the, the day, day off, off specially, have you? Wow. Yeah, yeah, me too. I bet, I bet the fucker doesn't come till five o'clock as well. Probably not. That's <laughs> happened to me with the Xbox when it came out, so... No. Yeah, that was you, funny. Which one have you got, Paul? The colour Joy-Con? No, I'm not into grey? I'm not into the colour ones. I'm just oh, quite good like man, Paul. I, I wanted just to, I've ordered the grey one. I've ordered the special Zelda, which comes with a big statue, uh, and also yeah. comes with six amiibos. What? <laughs> <laughs> you got six amiibos? Yeah. Oh my six God. amiibos. What Zelda amiibos? Yeah. How fast did you got them? I wanted them. <laughs> Yeah, they're sold out now, aren't they? Uh, go on to shop two. You'll find a couple of them on there. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's what's Got to be quiet. <laughs> got to be quiet. Yes. <laughs> Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, so we'll, we will see what it's like when it comes out. Alex, we'll get you back on here when it comes out as cool. well, so you yeah, can sweet. fanboy over it. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so... It's uh, going to be awesome. 
Oh, I mm. hope it is good. You know, it's just not really for me. But I <laughs> hope you have lots of fun with it. And I hope it's it's everything you hoped and dreamed it would be. Oh. You patronising <laughs> cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, well, well then I can just say time. So. three weeks, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Okay, right, so I'm going to just talk about a few games I've been playing. I'm not going to talk about them all because, um, you know, we're on a bit of a time limit tonight. So um, I can see that Switch is the only other person who has actually written in the show notes this week. Uh, all, the, the, all the rest of you I don't know where they're linked. You know where they no, are. No, it's going to be asked. No, Could not be fuckers. If you guys have played any of the games that I'm about to talk about as well, please feel free to chime in. So, first game, Resident Evil 7. Oh. <laughs> I've played the demo. Okay, so I, I know Switch has been playing it. I'm most interested to hear what Switch's thoughts are on it because he's been playing it on the PlayStation VR. Mm. Mm-hmm. Which is super awesome. Yeah, well, I'll let you crack on with it, uh, obviously, about it first. Oh, you own this anyway, Dan, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I've been playing it as well. Yep, so, yeah, what, Dan, what, what have you yeah, been playing it on the PlayStation? Uh, PlayStation 4, but I've yeah. only done about an hour and a half. Was it, was fucking, it was fucking terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I've all I've played is the demo on the VR, so I've had some experience with it. I bet uh, I, it's, I, it's awesome. I, I yeah. wouldn't be able to handle it in VR, I don't think. <laughs> so I've played it for a little while. I've literally uh, got to the point where I'm now outside of the house. I don't know if any of you are further than me. No. No, okay, not. so I've, yeah. I've I've just got outside the house, had a few boss battles. I I, uh, I picked up on PC, because uh, it was super cheap and it has the best graphics. So there, PC Master Race for the win, for that comment. Did you, did you uh, pay for that? Not really any uh, difference yes. to the PS4 one, mate. <laughs> no, exactly. Better Thanks. graphics on the PC, man. Max settings. Yeah, and you... Yeah, yeah but is it, over, is it over 4K? Because that's what it is on the PS4. Yeah, you can have it on 4K on a PC, easy. Yeah, so yeah, you, you can, yeah, but I'm saying you can't improve over the 4K, so it's exactly the same. Yeah, but you can get more frames per second, mate. So when so oh, what telly have you got? God. So, um, so Webby, what, anyway, Webby, what telly have you got? So let's yeah, what just, telly have you got? I don't know what off the top of my has... head. But well, it 200, something like it? that. Anyway. Yeah, whatever. Mate. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> I will fucking record next time with a fret FPS counter. That's fine. Anyway, yeah. digital foundry, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> it's, it's really scary. Yeah, uh, but it's really, really cool. I, I do like the direction that they've gone with this game. It's very. Um, it's unlike any Resident Evil game that's come out beforehand. It's all in first person and it's in a haunted house. Well, I'd say a haunted house. It's set in a house with like some freaky hillbillies that are chasing you down in the house. <laughs> it is fucked up. It, it kind of reminds me of The Hills Have Eyes, the video game. Yeah. Reminds me of some and of my old neighbours where I used to live. Yeah. <laughs> Good old leatherhead. Oh dear. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so I, w- but I would say though, is the first couple of hours of the game are probably the most scary. That's when the most shit kind of happens. And then the rest of the game so far for me, obviously I've not, I've not finished it, but um, so far it's turned into shoot, shooting yeah. uh, dudes in the face with, with a shotgun and solving puzzles like collecting dog heads to unlock a door. So, you know, like in the old Resident Evil games, you have to find like certain it's keys for doors. It's gone back to its roots, stuff. mate. Shoot yeah, so it's gone back to its roots in, like, in, in that respect. Yeah, so yeah. Of, of puzzles and stuff, but it's all in first person. Yeah, so yeah, but it feels it, like a new Resident. It feels like a new Resident Evil game. It feels it? like a new old Resident Evil because it's because right. it does remind me of the of the original in mm. in a small way because you're in that one kind of area solving puzzles etc. But I think it's more freaky and I'm not sure how it actually links to the overall story arc of the Resident Evil games. Well, yeah, but, a lot um, of it is down to the um, just the the atmosphere they create. It's very unnerving. Yeah, and I have actually and seen a spoiler video of the, of the end of the game, so I actually do know how it kind of links in, but I'm not going to say. Um, but it's really, really good. And I know people who have completed it and are raving about it, but they've already released a bit of DLC add-on as well, um, which apparently is very, very good as well. But um, So as you go through the game, you find these videotapes. Retro, I know. 
and um, you put the videotapes in a, in a VCR and then you play through these videotapes of stuff that's happened in the house in the past, which is pretty fucking freaky as well. Mm. So... That reminds, me, only... that reminds me, is it The Ring or The Grudge or something where they put the tape in the video or something? The Ring, The it? Ring. Was it The Ring, wasn't it? Yeah. The yeah. Ring, yeah. Seven days. So could, you play the, could you play this on VR then, Webby, or would you think it's too scary? It'd be you? too scary for me. <laughs> right, put it this way. <laughs> I have played through probably about three hours of the game, um, and I'm taking it very slowly. Um, for me... Um, I think this game was actually built with VR in mind. Mm. Just the way it's crafted, it's the, in no way whatsoever does it feel like a tacked on extra. Um, the entire environment is completely rendered in like 3D. You can see things in completely different ways than you would if you were just looking for a screen. Like you can literally like crouch down, look under beds, turn around, look behind kettles and just anything there, it's rendered, and you can like look round it, look over it, look through, like round it or whatever. It's it's brilliant. But when you actually get attacked in VR, that is a completely different kettle of fish because that catches you off guard. Obviously, I've done kitchen and stuff where you're just basically sort of tied to a chair and someone comes in and parades around in front of you. But when you've literally got someone trying to stab your face out. Yeah, and you are physically making eye contact with that person while they're so actually doing when you're it. walking about because I only played the damn demo around my mate's house, and I was just sitting in the chair and the guy's woman stabbing me in the leg, but I didn't actually move out of that chair. So when you get yeah, up see, and move about, you don't actually walk around the room, do you? Yeah, no, that's the kitchen demo, not the actual beginning uh, demo. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's that was just basically a, a test there, and, and it's a shame really because that kitchen demo is a spoiler. Right. Because but when you move about in the room, though, yeah. you just move forward with the analog sticks, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, when you're actually controlling it, um, like it depends on how you feel. Um, like with this game, this Resident is a good game to test your motion sickness with because obviously. On most VR games, you're sort of on rails or you're sort of generally stuck to a spot. But on this, you're physically having to move around. Um, and literally, you push up on the ana left analog stick, and whichever way you're looking will be the direction you basically head. Right. head. Um, and you can use the left and right analog stick to basically turn left or right. But it's originally set where you push right and it will do like an incremental turn. Well, so it'll just like chop in degrees, and that really throws you off when you're in VR. Yeah. Like your perspective just instantly just shifts. Yeah, I guess that's what so, what the, most people are having with it because it's not catching up with where your brain think it is. That's where you get yeah, the motion sickness. You can isn't it? turn that off. You can turn that off and actually have it where left and right will move you smoothly, like pan yeah. you smoothly left and right. Um, and now it's literally got to the point where I can literally run along forwards, quickly look down to the left while I'm possibly being chased, grab something off the side and carry on going. Mm. Sort of a thing with it. Um, but it is it has been a, a, a fantastic experience. That's all I can say. Obviously, there's a good scene right near the beginning where there's a lot of people all sort of sat together. Uh, and there's basically a character there I do not fucking like. Um, <laughs> whether, you, whether, you pick, whether you pick up on it or, or not, but when you're in VR and you're obviously walking around, there's a character there who you're like, oh, that person's generally harmless, and then you slowly realise that they're following you around wherever you walk. Mm. They're watching. <laughs> Even though it looks like the lights on the no one's not home. Cold, is it? Uh, <laughs> and then later on, you will find that character somewhere completely different, and you you're literally scratching your head as to how that person even got there in the first place. Mm. I, yeah, I mean, that sounds too creepy. There, what yeah, I but the it, it sell me. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. The shooting, uh, I always wondered how they handle first person shooting in VR, and this game handles it exceedingly well. It's the usual. Um, 
L trigger brings your gun up, and then basically wherever you look with your head, basically, you still get like a nice reticle thing anyway. Uh, that will be where you aim, and then obviously the, the right trigger fires. But it's cool, obviously, in VR. You can bring your gun up, and then like literally lean out around the corner with your gun. Sort of thing. So if there's anything around the corner, you can just quickly fire off at it. Someone's playing, playing games. Game. Yeah, yeah, he's playing games. That's Dan. Gotta be Dan or Switch. I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing. No, it's not me. Someone's, no, I'm playing Super Punch Out. Sorry. And someone's Darth Vader <laughs> as well. <laughs> That's Dan as well. No, <laughs> it's not me. That's I can me. I'm, well. I'm vaping. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll stop playing games. I know I get told off for this. I'll stop vaping. Uh, well, anyway, I'm, so yeah, Resident Evil Seven. Just very quickly, uh, would recommend it if you're into scary yeah. games. It's pretty cool. Oh, for fuck's sake, my battery's flat. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Right, can we move on to the next game unless you've got anything else you want to say on it, Darren? Uh, no, that's it, basically. Just like, if you're fed up of the standard Resident Evil titles that we've had for the last few years, this is definitely worth checking out. There's obviously the beginning hour demo on pretty much everything, so uh, that will give you a pretty good idea of how the game is, but there is generally no combat in the beginning hour demo, whereas in the actual full game, there is actually guns and things like that in it. But yes, it's very cool. The atmosphere is awesome. Uh, and it's the first time in ages I've been like wary of going into new areas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas in the old games, you'd be like, yeah, I'll just wander in here with my rocket launcher and my God knows what else <laughs> and my cold yeah. party. You so, know what I mean? Tool up. Just, bring it. Yeah, yeah. at this time, you walk <laughs> in and like, you hear a funny noise in the corner and you just back away like, nope, nope, nope. Right, I'm going to talk about something else then. Um, so I played the other day the Near Automata demo on the PS4. Good man. Oh my god. <laughs> the good. It is awesome. Is that the Dark Souls one? No, that's, no. that's Neo. Oh, it's Neo. They sound similar. They've got yeah. an N. <laughs> but did any of you play the original Nier on the Xbox 360? Yeah, I did. I thought it was awesome. So, yeah, that was brilliant. Vastly underrated. And so this is kind of the sequel. Um, and you play as this... Well, in the demo, you play as this uh, lady. Uh, you find out that she's an android. And you have this little hey, robot that floats around next to you. And you get to shoot stuff with him. And you have these cool floating swords behind you, which you can also use as weapons. But like the original Nier, it was set kind of like third person behind the shoulder view. But then it also turns into a side-scrolling platformer at times. And then in the demo, it also turns into a bullet hell flying your little... Over the top as well. Yeah. Top I was like, man, they've got <laughs> all these cool things going on in this game. And uh, you get you do this really cool boss battle as well. And, oh man, I've not played a game like like this for ages where you're kind of exploring the world, fighting loads of dudes and then having these, just these crazy boss battles. It's just so much fun. Um, and the little robot that floats next to you, you can actually get a, get different skins for him and one of them is a PS1. So yeah, he's like a, a floating PS1, which, which, is, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Um, you know you can unequip him. Really? Oh, I yeah, know if you unequip him, you die. But you oh. can actually unequip him because he's your life support. <laughs> oh, that's just a bit silly, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's. Have Have you played the demo as well, then, Switch? Or yeah, I talked about it a few weeks back. Oh, well, that, that that was ages ago. I can't sort of remember. Thing, but yeah, I'm but... really looking forward to this. This is out on the same day, I think, as Ghost Recon in the UK, though. Yeah, so... Which is a bit of a bugger. Oh, no. So I'm going to be holding off on this for a while. Well, um, there is but... a PC version forthcoming. Uh, I don't know how far away it is. Um, but if you wanted to wait, it will end up on the PC. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty cool game. Check out the demo. Uh, it's free, obviously, a demo. So ch ch check it out. Okay, so let's talk about the best game I've been playing. The Ghost Recon Beta. Oh, speak to me, Goose. Speak to you, Goose. Is uh, Goose uh, here? Hello? No, it's just a classic line from Top Gun. But anyway. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> way over. It's <laughs> gone way over my head. Fucking hell. It's retro. Anyway, so, did any of you get into the beta? No. No. Uh, no. Nah. Nah. All of you. Nah. Got Next. <laughs> so, uh, it's actually... It, it was one of my high, most highly anticipated games of the year. Oh. And after playing the beta... I uh, have to inform you that it has now confirmed my prediction of being Game of the Year 2017. Oh, here we go. Right, this is number one. So, right, let's see what mate, the next one is. Mate, oh. you're talking to a lot of people who are going to buy a Switch. <laughs> yeah. do, we give a, do we give a fuck? So, the people who are buying a Switch are not going to like this game because it actually involves playing with other people online, which Nintendo <laughs> is fucking shit at doing. Um... Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah. So you, the whole game is four-player drop-in, drop-out co-op, which is great. I'm, I am. Like, the thing that shocked me the most about this game is in the demo, they only gave you one small portion of the map to play in, and that small portion of the map was absolutely fucking massive. So this world is like in total is just going to be all consuming wow this is going to take a lot of time to explore to do the missions which is great because the thing missing from the division was story missions to do with your mates had about eight missions and that was it yeah so on this it's going to have it's going to have a lot of con it, it is going to have a lot of content i mean in the in the beta they only had six missions like single player uh, main story missions, and they took ages. And the amount of side missions to do was just unbelievable. But it's massive open world. You can fly around choppers, getting cars. Uh, so it has lost its kind of classic Ghost Recon feel of you know hyper realism, uh, hyper tactics, and turned more into like just uh, well third person shooter, a bit like the Division, but in a better setting. Uh, but it does still utilises a lot of the technology where you can send drones out, spot enemies, do like you can do the missions very sneaky if you want. Or we ended up just doing most of them just guns blazing because you know what's more fun than shooting people in the face. So <laughs> really enjoyed the 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 beta. There is actually an open beta coming out very soon before the game comes out. So I awesome. would recommend. I will be there. It. Yeah. So check out the open beta. Because I guarantee you it will sell you on the game and you will buy it day one. That is how confident I am on this game. It is so much fun. So, that is my review yeah. of Ghost Recon. I've heard it's very tactical based. You can't just go in guns blazing or you could end up in trouble, basically. Well, you, you can go in guns blazing if you want, but you will probably die a lot. Um, you know, so it's very... You know, like in the division where you go behind cover and you can pick dudes off. It's very much like that. You can chuck a drone in the air, spot enemies. Um, I don't know if you're watching the video that that's streaming on Twitch at the moment, but you know that's kind of how the gameplay is. Ducking behind cover, like in the old Ghost, old Ghost Recons, you can switch between which shoulder you're you're looking over, which is pretty cool. So oh, I love um, that. that. That's yeah. one of the things I miss in so many games. Being yeah. able to click your shoulder over. Yeah. Right. And the cool People thing is you, you can choose as well. Like, so when you press in your left trigger to zoom in, you can choose to either like make it so it looks down your gun or just zooms in over the shoulder, which I think is mm. a really, really cool feature as well. And the yeah. gunsmith no, no, is back people. as well. So, oh, good. so that's cool. Yeah, there's so yeah. much customization in this game. Good. It's wow. Just wow. That's all I can say about it. So Cool. Yes, um, I've been playing a lot of Rainbow Six this that past... That's like milk cart if you turn upside down. Oh, fucking hell. I've been playing a lot of Rainbow Six this past week. Uh, I picked up on PC as well, so I've been playing it on PC and on the Xbox One. Uh, they brought out some more new content, some new operators, and a really cool new map. Um, I'm so safe to say this game is now a year old and is still one of the best shooters available on PC and console. Uh, and it's on sale now on con well it was on sale on console for 15 quid for all those people that hadn't or hadn't picked up before so um, I thought that was really really good uh, and it's fantastic and those of you who don't play it are noobs that's what I'm going to say 
And I've also been playing the most hardcore of shooters in the world, Armour Free. I've been playing some co-op missions on that. Hardcore military shooter. I know you guys don't really aren't really into that. Uh, but for those awesome. of us who enjoy our hardcore games, absolutely brilliant. And just topping it off with the last couple of games, I've been playing golf with friends with Sly Almond on PC. It's mini golf with your friends online, that's all I can say, and it's a lot of fun. Um, I did check out Total War Warhammer on the PC. Um, this game is a resource hog, so if you have a crappy PC, do not bother checking it out. I've got a pretty decent PC, and that struggles to run it. I haven't played it much. Uh, I just basically sent my dudes out to war, and they were fighting each other, and it looked like the AI was doing everything, and I was just watching the war, so that that's, turned that's it off. That's why they're so intensive it's not the graphics yeah. it's the it's the ai and the units yeah yeah basically. i mean it, i mean it looks nice it's pretty cool but um I'll, mm. I'll, i will give it another shot when i've got a bit more time um i played metro 2033 redux on xbox 3 on, on the xbox one this week completed it uh that's the third time i've now finished metro 2033 and it's still a great game so um the first one or the second one the first one first First yeah. One, right, okay. yeah, they had them both on sale for four pounds. So it's two, wow. two pounds a game. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Uh, and the last game, uh, Leon yesterday picked us up Guitar Hero Live with two guitars for twenty quid from Argos. Nice. Which is a bit of a bargain. When are you taking it back? Uh, well, <laughs> it is not. I can see why it was so cheap. It's really not bad, very is it? good. Well, you know, like in the old Guitar Hero and Rock Band games, you had the six buttons going down the fret of the guitar. Yeah. This has only yeah. got three. Well, it's got six buttons, but they're like you, there's three. It's like three buttons, but they're like split in half. If that makes so, sense. What? So you got three in a row, and then you got another three in a row in front of it. Uh, like on top of them, yeah. All right. Okay. That's Why more realistic. That? That's more realistic for the string positions. No, but... Yeah, but it's fucking crap. Oh. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so I think that's run its course, isn't it? Guitar yeah, Hero, I, I really? don't see them doing another one, but I just wanted to mention if you are thinking of getting it, I'll um, buy Webby's. Pro, <laughs> I, I, I'm selling mine for 20 quid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the weird thing was, was that that announced it was making a comeback, yeah, and then like Rock Band was like, oh, we are as well, and then Rock Band, uh, never or was did it anything. the other way around? Can't remember. I know one of them announced that they was doing a new game, like after years, and everyone was like, "Yeah!" And then the other lot were like, "Oh, we are as well." The trouble is, they're those plastic toys that you use. I mean, I've got some Guitar Hero stuff that I bought years ago. It's actually in the spare garage, actually, still. And it's just, it's just the, the amount of room that stuff takes yeah. as well. And you've you got the drum kit and all of you, Paul. Yeah, I've got the whole. You know, oh, they, yeah, yeah, it's why it's in the spare garage. You've got the maracas and all that. It come with everything, yeah, yeah. It even come with the, the band as well. They're still oh, in the garage. Wow. I'll let them out one day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, they're just big clumsy things. And if you don't use them, if if you're not using them all the time, then they just take up room. And people, your missus moans about them, so they went in the garage. Fair dues. Mm. Um, Best that... um, musical game with things like that. <coughs> Samba de Amigo. Oh, bloody hell. Yes. Oh, what, on the Dreamcast? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never had the that. Maracas. Or, or, or the Donkey Kong, <laughs> Donkey Kong Congo. Was, was oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Donkey Konga, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got that. Donkey Konga. Um, that's all that I've played that's worth mentioning this week. Um, and I didn't want this podcast to drag on for like 10 million years. So, who's next? Switch. Uh, I'll jump in next. I'll briefly say, like, obviously... Division, playing a bit of that again. Um, slightly getting bored of it now. Um, not particularly because it's thingy, but just the fact that I've maxed most of my gear out anyway and I'm not really picking up anything that's actually any better than what I've got. Um, and I think, my, like most people, we're just waiting for this new patch update to come out. I mean, fair enough, we're going to be getting the last piece of DLC, but when I heard it was PvP, I was just like, oh, really? I won't be touching that then. Well done. Um, so, yeah, fool me again for buying a season pass before actually knowing what it's actually going to include. Well, well, well. Lols. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Final Fantasy XIV, been playing a fair bit of that. Um, last few days have been actually like Savage Raiding. Um, like trying to find groups and stuff on that. Actually cleared... Uh, A9 Savage after three hours of, of training yesterday afternoon. 
You need training um, for these. You can't just jump in and do shit. Well, you have to find groups because these are just so much different from the other stuff. If one person makes a mistake, you wipe the entire raid. And oh, you start I don't think I'm even going to bother then. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's proper hardcore, mate. Um, like I'm in one at the moment, which is a a ten, um, and some of the stuff on that's just hilarious. Like that you have to sort of do and dodge and everything. But again, with everything, the more you do it, the more you learn it, and then it just becomes yeah. second nature, sort of a thing. You guys talk a lot about. Final Fantasy, you're really into it, aren't you? How many hours have you stuck into it so far? Uh, 6,700. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 I, 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 I fancy it. I do fancy it, but that's a lot. See, I'm not as hardcore as Switch, uh, and I've uh, pretty much maxed out two characters now, mm. um, and I've done about 800 hours or something like that, I think. That's, so, still, that's still a lot when yeah, you think about it. yeah. And what? How's the combat combat different than the other games? Then is it like Final Fantasy? Have they got a completely different route with the combat now? Is it all it's, real time? It's yes, yeah, sort of real time. With I can't remember. There is a terminology, isn't there, for the things? Active, where, like, is you, it active you, time you, combat or something like that? Something like that. You basically use skills with like a multitude of skills with cooldowns. Where like so you can pause the pause the game while you think no, about what you're going to do. No, it's an MMO, mate. <laughs> it's always online. If you stand your character in the wrong zone and decide to walk away from the controller, you'll come back and find they're unconscious on the floor. Oh right, okay. So it's all real time now then. Yeah. Uh, right. But yeah, mm. um, I'll speak about this enough anyway, so I won't bother wasting any more time. Uh, we obviously covered Resident Evil Seven, but the main game I want to talk about this year is this year. Uh, this year, sorry. <clears throat> I was just thinking, like, one of the, it was, I was going to say it's probably up there for one of my games of the year already, um, and that's Nio. Wow, yeah. So, yeah, I've got guys at work have been playing this, and they've been raving about it as well. Um, apparently, it's like the Dark Souls with a Japanese character, like a samurai dude or something. It's the oh. easiest way to describe it is basically Dark Souls meets Ninja Gaiden meets. Oh, man. I've got to get one. Can't remember what it was because it's it's developed by Team Ninja from Ninja Gaiden. So basically, the combat is Ninja Gaiden, oh, except they Gaiden. except they have extended on it so much more than uh, I remember them doing in Ninja Gaiden. So you've obviously got a multitude of weapons you can use, but then you've got three different stances for every single weapon. You've got low stance, mid stance, and high stance. Certain stances are obviously better against other things, and I know this is going to sound a bit like For Honor to people that were obviously playing that, but it's not like the rock, paper, scissors thing that sort of For Honor uses. Um, so obviously your low stance deals quicker attacks, but obviously at the expense of damage. Your mid stance is your standard, and your high stance leaves you open, powerful swings, but obviously you're going to take a lot of damage if you get hit. Um because it's by the people who do Team Ninja, the combat in this feels so satisfying, but you is get it, is, so... Is it as un- fast as Ninja Gaiden? It seems Ninja that way Gaiden at times. Ninja Gaiden Black I played on the original Xbox, and that yeah, was um, awesome. I wouldn't say it was as fast as that. You haven't got like the super zip through and like the de- decapitations and stuff that you get. Um, but you make a single mistake in this game and you can just get utterly punished. Like there there have been times where it's like, yep, yeah, oh, I messed that one up, and then it's like, oh, you just completely comboed the rest of my health. Brilliant. Mm. Just, just like out. Dark Souls then. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Can um, you go back to a like a hub area and um Yes. Uh so you get sort of checkpoints back. as you go through each level called shrines, and you basically some of them are actually hidden away in areas you'd actually um wouldn't really look at. Because another way that this game is done compared differently to the Dark Souls games is their levels. You literally go into a level, mm. so it's not like a big open hub area that you mm. can explore. These are small, smaller contained levels, but yet you still have the things where it's like you can loop around the back of an area, knock a ladder down, which then gives you a, a shortcut back to a further part of the level without you having to work all your way around. Because... Similar to Dark Souls and stuff, whenever you pray at one of these shrines, you get all your health and stuff back, but it respawns all the enemies Mm. at the same time. Um, Now, some of the other things this game does that's pretty interesting is the more you use a weapon, the more you become familiarised with it, which means its stats increase. 
Um, you've also got weapon fusions where you can fuse two weapons together and obviously take a certain statistic off of one to then place onto another, which is uh, quite similar to some of the older Musu games in that effect. What's your weapon of choice? Uh, at the moment, I'm going like standard katana and I've got dual blades as my secondary, but I haven't started using that. Um, Any nunchucker in there? Uh, no, you've got a k- Kurisigama. I can't remember entirely if that's spelt correctly. You know the, mm. the chain with the sickle on the end of it and oh, the big yeah, yeah. on the other? you got that. You've got axes. You've got spears. Uh, they'll probably add um, other stuff in as DLC and stuff as well. But then there's different types of those weapons that you pick up because this has a Diablo loot system mm. in it. Well, so cool. whenever you basically kill an enemy... They have a chance of dropping either healing substances like ammunition for your rifle or your crossbow, uh, sorry, your longbow, um, or weapons or just standard armor. Each piece they drop has completely randomized stats, so you could pick up like really rare items or you could pick up shite. Uh, you can trade these in at the shrine, which basically gives you like more emirata which is basically its equivalent of souls which is what you use to level up and learn other stuff um it's it's trying to explain everything in this is quite quite a headache actually you also have a choice of a guardian spirit that follows you around and it builds up like a limit break basically and when the gauge is full you can activate it and depending on what you've got you can either have increased evasion speed extra damage power or uh, I think it's like better defense, but you're when this is active anyway, you're invincible. You can't actually take damage. <coughs> but when you hit an enemy, it will deplete your gauge. If an enemy hits you, it will deplete your gauge faster. So it's still not a good idea to just go wailing in willy nilly because um, you'll just waste it and then sort of you'll snap back to normal and then you might get one shotted. Which I've had a few times actually. I've been one shotted by quite a few enemies in this game where I've just made a single mistake. Uh, and one other thing I will say, fuck bats. Anyone who's done the second again? level, fuck bats. Anyone who's done the okay. second level will, will know exactly what I'm on about when bats start coming into play. Bloody things. Fuck them, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Okay. okay. Um, this all, Every time you do any sort of action in the game, it goes towards a progress in a title list as well which is in your overall records, Uh, the more of these you complete, you basically earn like renown points whenever you complete a title. And these renown points basically work like the badass rank system did in um, Borderlands 2. So you get a couple of titles, you'll get, say, 15 of these renown points, and then once the bar goes up past a certain amount, you'll get a perk point to spend in like one of these different perks. There's two different types of perk sets. I think one's like luck-based, key-based, which is your stamina, which is something you really need to manage in this game. Um, and then your other one will be like your close attack damage, your better defense and stuff like that. Um, one of the other little niche things that this has to it is whenever you perform a combo, you get like a shadow of like blue rights that sort of come out of your weapon and start surrounding you. When they get to a certain point, you can quickly pop the R1 button, a bit like an active reload in, say, Gears, and you'll instantly get back a bunch of stamina that you've expended. Mm. So it enables you to um, keep... Sort like of on a mission, on a mission did that, didn't it? That's the, that's the other one. That's another one that other people yeah. have compared this to. So it's basically yeah. like Onimusha, Souls, and Ninja Gaiden. That was again. an awesome game. Um, but they were quite slow-paced. I mean, Dark Souls is quite slow-paced, although the combat is, yeah, is this quite heavy. Is, but Ninja Gaiden is a fast-paced no, combat is, game, isn't it? This is the fastest Souls-like I've played. Like yeah. people you didn't play Bloodborne though, did you? Is yeah, I did. I did play. It's it faster than that. It's faster, faster than that. Than that. Right, yeah, okay. you have to be proper on time. Sounds with right you. up my street, mate. That does. And that's in the PS4, is it? Yes. Um, you basically also whenever you level up, depending on how you level up, you learn stat points in either ninjutsu. Uh, magic or like samurai skills and you can basically buy upgrades for your weapons like finishers and combo enders and things like that so 
you can get it where you can walk up behind someone and like literally punch a sh- straight through them with your blade sort of thing if they haven't noticed you or you could change it for something else that might just kick them away from you most of the ones i've got which end the combo i end up like slashing and dashing back from them because usually at that time they'll be swinging for me but i i haven't heard had anyone say a bad thing about it yet and i think if you're into your souls games and stuff or those type of ones this is like one of my mates said who's played it he said it's like they've taken the best elements of various games and just mashed them all together into this game. Sounds awesome, man. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so far I'm really, really enjoying it. I've I've only gotten frustrated at one, literally one point, and that was because of the fucking bats, because that was cheap as shit. What did you do to the bats again? Basically, if you're on the second okay. level, you'll see a ledge, uh, yeah. and if you walk through this certain door, bats will fly at your face, and if you don't know they're there, that you'll just get knocked straight off and die, and then you've got to go all the way back to the start of this level, and it was quite a mission to get to that point. Basically a cheap, cheap, get, oh, cheap, yeah. a cheap shot, yeah? Yeah, that was the only time I was literally like, it was cheap as fuck, you know what I mean? Um, first boss and everything wasn't too bad. Um, like I ended up, first time I went through it, um, I pulled me, summoned in someone to help me because obviously having him target someone else every now and again is a bonus. Um, and then the second time, because you can keep redoing levels as many times as you want, you can go back into them for more loot or like grind more souls or whatever you want to do in that sort of sense. Um, second time I went back in, summoned another guy. I just finished the end end boss, and he got absolutely destroyed. And I just thought, hold on a second, like you you can only actually summon people into your world who have already finished the level. So that person must have known, like the the boss's move set and everything. And I literally finished him with like almost a scrap. But I'm now up to I believe it's the end end second boss, and she's a bitch. If it's if that is actually the boss it's like basically she's got a move she'll hit you you'll be paralyzed and you cannot move and then she'll just hit you again and then as soon as you get up paralyzed hit again oh you're dead <laughs> sort of a thing so again it's it's got that same punishment factor of like you need to know exactly what to do at the right moment if you're even a slight way out like even a normal enemy will tear you to pieces Sort of a thing. Yeah, it but, looks good, man. But, it looks really, really yeah. good. On the opposite side, there's um, when you do actually complete missions, you'll get um, I think it's nightmare missions, which are only available at certain times of day because obviously at certain times the story will progress through different um, day and night sort of things. And these are basically super hard versions of like previous missions with like really good rewards attached to them. But obviously, you need to be pretty damn good to do them. Uh, or you'll also unlock like another mission, which is basically takes place on the level you've done before with higher level enemies, different style enemies, and you will need to basically go through it from the start to the end without any checkpoints and stuff in between. Ouch. But you, it, when you pull it off, you feel like a badass because it's just like, yeah, I'm macked everyone. And it doesn't take you too long to sort of, get used to it if you know what i mean i mean there's a lot of times where i've fucked up and i know it's literally that's because i was shit that's because i misjudged my attack i didn't move out the way in time my attack fell short and i left myself open you see it's getting too hard though switch i mean ninja gaiden black was so hard i don't think i finished it because it just got just so ridiculously hard can you see i mean is this early on in the game or Um, you know well, that was early on. Um, yeah. I've, I've found it easier than any Souls like so far, but that might have just been because I never really clicked with the slow and sluggish type pace of the Dark Souls mm. games. Mm. Um, whereas this has got proper roll dodging and like you can quickly switch around. I mean, I haven't even got used to blocking in this yet. I mean, um, Every enemy in the game, you can see their stamina as well as their health. And as soon as you like hammer them down with a guard, you'll see their stamina drop, and then they will literally be going to like a paralyzed state where they can't move or react. And you yeah, can do they have like attack patterns? Them, do they? You can get, um, get yes and no, but then again, it's like almost every single bit of combat you come in on feels like a one-on-one. Mm. 
sort of a thing. And if you get two on, on it's like, oh, I better use some bombs or some magic here to sort of like try and whittle one away because you know one of them's going to be swinging for you while you're trying to hit the other one, sort of thing. Does the uh, PS Pro give this game extra grunt? Uh, it does, yes. <laughs> Even though the um, the I think the extra th- the the three options are still there for people without the pro. Um, so basically, you've got like um, standard mode, which like basically keeps the frame rate at a solid sixty. That still looks fantastic. You've got one that sort of pushes the game up to sort of like four K, um, depending, but it's around thirty FPS. Uh, and then you've got the one I usually use, which is basically it updates the graphics as much as it can while keeping the frame rate as stable at 60 as it possibly can. And for something that's quite action and reaction based, you're going to want it around that 60 FPS. What's the mark, art it? style of it? Is it kind of... Um, it's pretty cool, actually. I mean, a lot of people have, go, have said in things where are like, oh, this looks like a PlayStation 3 game or something. And you're like, fuck off. Mm. Um, no, it looks good, man. It's uh, very actiony. I'm mean, watching a video of it at the moment. Looks good. It's actually been in development for over ten years because it was originally released, uh, unveiled as being a PS3 game back in the day. Um, what I find interesting about this, apart from obviously the fact that, like I said in the in the group chat, is the game is loosely based upon a real person who was literally born no further than like two or three miles from where I live, uh, William Adams. Um, who basically was born in Gillingham uh, and ended up sort of like sailing over to Japan. There's enough videos and like you've linked me to the articles webby about it and stuff online where a lot of people have sort of taken a bit of uh, an interest in it. But this is developed by um, obviously Team Ninja under like um, Tecmo Koi Games or whatever it was. Um, And I presumed that they would be publishing it but they aren't. Like, Tecmo Koi's name isn't on this box or anything whatsoever. Weird. Uh, it's on the back, actually. Koi Tecmo, sorry. Um, but it's actually been published by Sony themselves. So, to me, this shows me that they realised they fucked up with Dark Souls. Because back in the day, when they released Demon Souls they were offered the chance to own that franchise as an exclusive and they turned it down. Mm. But then again, that franchise then wouldn't have gone on to and have reached as yeah. many people because it wouldn't, it would have literally just stayed on one platform. So in a bonus, it was a good way that they did. I just presume Sony have jumped in on this and sort of said like, no, we'll, we'll publish yeah. that. If we don't ever decide to release it on any other platform will make a load of shit, uh, money off of it. Dan? Yo. Your Hello. nose is whistling, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sing a song one of these uh, days. Is it? Oh, sorry. I, I have cleared my nostrils out. Yeah. And I had a bit of a shave up there late, earlier. That's right. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Yeah. That, that's, that's enough of, of, of Neo anyway. But um, like I say, I'm really Neo or Nio, however you're actually supposed to pronounce it. But I, I'm... Way more impressed with it than I thought I would be. Yes, it looks really cool, um, and I would like to pick it up, but oh, I will wait until it's like cheap. Oh yeah, you're bound to get a few people that will pick it up, get over frustrated with it, and then you know what I mean, get rid of it or whatever. But at the moment, it's sold out everywhere, so um, I'm Is anticipating. It? Yeah, the, I'm, I'm anticipating the price to stay high for a, for a long oh. while. Uh, even Amazon ran out ran out of stock. They ran out of Resident Evil as well, I noticed. Mm. So you know, it's proven well. quite a popular game uh, for PlayStation owners. So, uh, yeah. you played anything else? Or uh, no, that's it. That's basically. I've probably played a few other bits, but nothing to really sort of like super mention or whatnot. Cool. Uh, who's next? Uh, was it Paul? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, carrying on with my um, year of uh, living gamelessly. Um, I am still on my quest to finish games, and I have actually finished a couple, actually. Um, I've finished uh, Dishonored. Oh, good um, man. Yeah. The first um, one. Yeah, the first one, yeah. yeah. I, um, I love hate with that game. Parts of that game I absolutely loved, parts of that game I absolutely hated or really frustrated me. I'm not a fan of um, first-person stealth games. 
I always quite like the third person because I think I can see him more around me. To see him move the camera around. Yeah, to see and I just corners and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and there's, there's a few times where I feel like you do something other or you wake him, and that was the other thing as well with the game. <clears throat> if you do actually get um, noticed, it was very hard to get away from them. Um, as in, like, try and hide somewhere, even using the quick time where you can, you know, steam from one side of the map to the other side of the map to go to a different location. Um, you still, they still knew where you were to a certain degree. Um, so you you end up just, I mean, for me, I, I never went through the whole, like, what Colin did, where he just tried to do everything stealthy. I, I just destroyed everything in the end. <laughs> so you ended, up with a, you ended up with a plague rat infested cesspit um it was all right actually i didn't think the ending was that bad really i mean yeah fuck them you know i've done what i wanted to do you know went out of there, <laughs> killed them all. <laughs> so but um yeah it was quite good i enjoyed it but it, i don't know i think the problem was is it, i felt it went on too long it just went on and on and on and on i was like fucking hell man it's like am i going to finish this game it's like yeah, you know, I, I, I try and stick to a sort of limit of how many, how long I can play one game, and that was the thing. I've been playing it for like nearly two weeks, I think it was, because don't forget, I don't get many hours these days to play a game. So you get like two hours in an evening, or even an hour sometimes, and it was just like goes on and on and on. And I was thinking, God, is this going to end? So when the actual ending did come, it was like, yeah, finally it's done. But it was all right. It was, it's not, it's no game of year for me. But then I don't think it's my style of game. Um, would I play Dishonored 2? I don't think I would, to be honest, because... Well, you, you're saying it's not your style of game, mm. but I remember when I played this game, it, it, it gave me huge, like, Bioshock vibes. Yeah, but it's not... Ste- it, Bioshock doesn't have to be... Isn't stealthy, though, is it? There yeah, is the, it, it does remind me of Bioshock, as in, like, Emily, the little girl in it, stuff like that, trying to rescue her and stuff, but... Yeah, it isn't. It's not. It isn't Bioshock. I'm afraid it, it is a stealth game, and there's certain things where you have to go certain ways to get into buildings. The problem I have with it as well was there was certain bits where you go to a certain section and you have like these um, uh, force fields, so you can't go that way. So you've got to try and find another way into this building or whatever. Now, in the process of doing that, you've got armed guards wandering around. Now, you're trying to look around the place as well, as well as not get spotted. So it normally takes two or three attempts before you can actually work out where you've got to go. Um, it, you know, and did, I don't know. Did you ever play Thief? Yeah, I did I play. Th- yeah, I played Thief. Yeah, I, the See, that should have got that should have got you used to first person stealth because I was actually all right at that, to be honest. Oh, I thought well, it was boring. <laughs> yeah, Thief was pretty boring, to be honest. Um, I must admit, it wasn't that great. I mean, it was all right. It, I don't it's know. just the pace of those games. They're just too slow, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? You mean to me, you're not, I suppose, but I find yeah. slow and boring. Yeah, it was. I mean, to me, it was a little bit... Uh, maybe I'm just a bit too gun ho these days, and it was just I wanted something that I can just smash the shit out of something, yeah. you know, instead of, like, you've got to sneak past them. And, you know, there was, like, one bit where... I sneaked past a couple of dudes and then I, I, that was it. I rung the lo- alarm bells and it was like fucking World War Three goes off. So I go through the door to the next next entrance to the next level and I stood there by the door for a minute looking at where I can go. And next thing you know, it's like four of them from the other room came through him through me. It was like, oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ, here we go. And I couldn't get out of that. I'd actually already done the save and it was like, oh, God. You go back to begin do it all over again. No, I just fucking destroyed them all. Um, <laughs> so, as but, you do, as you do, yeah. I mean, it was all right. It's mm. it's done. It was it was something I wanted to get done. I bought it ages ago. I think it was cheap in Tesco's. I think it was for about eight quid. I think it was. So and it had all the DLC, which I haven't played the DLC. I know Slice said always oh, should play it, but I want to just stick to the main games at the moment. I don't want to start getting involved in other bits and bobs. The DLC, from what I can recall, actually gives a lot of light on the actual main game anyway. Mm. It's all to do with Das Dale, I think. Dale's. Isn't it the assassin at the start? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this assassin halfway through that you deal with that I thought I killed, but I don't think I did. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. That's that done. Um, finished Titanfall 2. I actually went back to that and thought, well, I want to finish the campaign on that because my game sharing days are going to be up soon, so I need to get that done anyway. Um, and that was on my 
with Mello sharing with him. Um, yeah, it was good actually. I must admit, I hadn't played it for a while, and I I must admit that's a really good campaign. That is, and the end in the way you sort of like gets quite quite intense at the ends where you're in a big Titan, you're sort of like there's you and there's a load of other Titans all around trying to go into this section that was really cool. Um, it was perfect for me because after playing Dishonored, I wanted something that was like wham bam, thank you, ma'am, you know, and that that just did it for me. Um, so yeah, I was happy with that. Um, well worth playing if you if you're into you know, your, your shooters, you know, to that degree. But um, yeah, fun. Um, shame we won't get another one, though, I'm afraid. So I don't. Well, I don't think we will for a, for a few years. Uh, um, what else to play? I played the bunker. No. Now, this, <laughs> now I haven't. I haven't finished it. I'm oh my god. Nine, I think it is. Um, I can only play this in short periods because it's so fucking boring. <laughs> right. So I actually played it this past week, and I didn't mention it uh, because I knew Paul was going to talk about it. Um, oh, Paul. He, right, the main he, character is such a fucking pussy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but then oh. he's, he's never, yeah, but he's never been with a woman. Right, we better, we better start where it comes from. Right, basically, you're in a bunker. Something's happened. That, well, there's a radiation thing that's happened outside. You're in this bunker with all these people. Something happens. I don't know what happens. That's something you've got to find out about. And, you're, and then you end and up you're on with, your own. Yeah. You're on your own with your mum. And basically yeah. your mum dies at the start of the game. And then it's just you. And all you've got is your three books. And you've got these little toys you play with. You've, you've, you've not had sex. You've never been out with anyone. You must probably not even had a wank. Um, <laughs> but the story is something happens. And yeah, he is a bit of a pussy, isn't he? Yeah, uh, and it's just like you have to do random things like, oh, I need to go down two flights of stairs to turn off this machine that's fucking up. And he's like having panic attacks walking down the stairs. I'm like, come on, mate, you've been in here all life. Let's just fucking go down these stairs and turn this bloody thing off. Mm, you know, no. and I was just like, it was just the most boring game. I don't even know why I finished it. I do not know what, what <laughs> brought me to do it. It's probably because it's not a very long game. Um, but I would not recommend it. It's just one of those, you know, like in the nineties, you had those live action, um, games, like mega one... CD games. Yeah, it is. It is <laughs> one of those. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And it, you can't really mess anything up on it, to be honest. I mean, there was one bit where you had to go down some stairs and it, you, you just have to make sure you put the cursor in the right place on the screen to do it. That was the only yeah. thing I did notice. The cursor is very slow on the game to move it around the screen. I don't know, I played um, on PC, mate, so... Oh, right, you played the PC, right, because I'm yeah. playing the PS4, but then it might have been because I was streaming it to the Lol, PC. so you paid for it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I paid four, yeah, I paid four quid for it in the sale. I think it was last year, and I put it on my game of the year thing, you know, uh, year of game, you know, game things. Yeah. And so I've got to finish it anyway. The only thing I will say though is for the people out there that are trophy and achievement hall hunters, this game chucks them out like a good. Oh, that's that's peeps sold already. Yeah, yeah, and Mella, yeah, Mella's <laughs> going to want to buy it. It'd be like, oh, four this. pounds result. Mm. Because it, 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 you're bound, you're going to get a thousand G on this if you really want to. I mean, some of the I, I'm doing it on the PS4, so the trophies I'm getting, I mean, they're um, the uh, silver ones I'm, I'm getting as well for certain bits and bobs, so which is quite cool. But yeah, it's a funny game, isn't it? Really, I, I mean, it's supposed to be a horror, but it didn't, it didn't it's feel not. Very horror. It's not scary. It's just fucking annoying. Mm, so, yeah. but there we go. That's it. That's that done. Um, I'll. Next time I'm on, I should have finished it. Mm. Um, I went back to GTA 5. Uh, Dude, because... did you know a little thing about GTA 5? I mean, I don't know how old it is now. It's three quite old. Years. Four years, three or four, four years, years, isn't it? 2013 right. it came out, so it's four so years old. So it's four years old, and it's still regularly in the top ten sales charts in, in the UK. How the hell... Does a four-year-old game stay in the top ten sales charts? That is just crazy. It's that online mode, mate. Wow. It is super popular mm. with people. Yeah, and it's still it's a twenty-five pound game. I mean, it's just dropped now for the first time. At, you know, for twenty-five quid, and do you know it's number two in the charts. Wow. 
Yeah, it's number two in the charts. The only thing that beat it was Resident Evil 7 this Fucking week. Fucking hell. But yeah, it's number two. So that just tells you how much money that game has made. And I tell you what, when they ever do release a new GTA, oh, 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 that's going to sell billions or millions where it is. Yeah, that's going to do really well. But I don't think they're going to release one for quite a while until the year. <coughs> no, Red, Red, Red Dead, Dead. Yeah, Red Dead yeah. next. Hmm. No, but the only thing that I'm worried about is because obviously it's the online mode that's kind of keeping people playing it. Mm. Uh, with Red Dead and my biggest worries with the next GTA more than the next Red Dead, it's just going to be on online only. Yeah, they're not even going to bother having a storyline or anything like that. Yeah, I hope they don't do that. That would mm. be shit. Mm. But go back to G- the... go on. I will go on. say the one thing I noticed about GTA Online that was like completely different is in from in the game. Is you could just get randomly shot and killed in one hit. Yeah. Mm. Whereas, like, you fucking what, mate? Like, uh, that that never happens in, like, the single player. Mm. Mm. No, but it's, um, I went back to it because, I mean, I have finished it once already on the Xbox um, 360. But I'm actually playing it through on the PS4. Uh, just every now and again, I just dip into it and play a little bit of it. But I'll tell you what, it's still a good game. It's still fun. It's entertaining. I'm doing all still the missions. It still looks great as well. It still looks great. I mean, to be honest, after playing Mafia last year, Mafia 3 for a little while, going back to GTA, GTA is just so much better. The the, the, the game mechanics, the, the way it moves around, the shooting mechanics and everything. Sky. Yeah, it's just the, well, the, well, the world as well. That was the one thing. I, I mean, I even said to the missus, look at this, look. I'm just standing in this street and this woman's just gone past me and just went, you know, she's just called me an arsehole. You know? <laughs> so it's like... I just, there you go, just real like life. real life. <laughs> so, so, and then... <laughs> yeah, cheeky bastard. And then the missus goes, why did you just punch her? I goes, because well, she called me an arsehole. So I just punched her in the face and then nicked her money. <laughs> well, you, you are an arsehole then. Yeah, so, but you can see why people love it. Yeah, even, <laughs> even standing at the beach, like if you just stand by the beach, you'll see people come down in the morning, and start exercising, joggers running past, and like they're all like leaving footprints as the sand as they jog along through it and everything. And it's it is but an impressive. Can, but thing. can you go to any car boots in it, Paul? No, you can go. To <laughs> so you can go to strip clubs and you can pay. Can I mean, I mean. Yeah, yeah, you can go to the strip clubs as well, in it. So, which and then you can pay money, and it goes down their top, and they do a little, sh- you know, a little mm. shimmy for you, you know. Nice. Uh, and then there's the private room, isn't there? You can take them to, and they do a special dance for you, you know. And mm. then you find out that it's a geezer. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. But, and you um, keep yeah. going back for more. Yep, keep going back for more. <laughs> anyway, what well, else you play, Paul? Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Then the last thing I'll just say is uh, we fired up our GameCube this week. Um, I, I still like my GameCube. Fired it up, and we've been playing the Mario Party games. We're playing Mario Party Four at the moment, and I tell you what, they're they're just such fun games. Playing with you know, we've got three controllers set up, two Wave Birds, and a normal Lady one, and it's just they're good fun. And to be honest, it's a shame that. So you know, I wouldn't. I'm saying to Alex, I wouldn't mind getting the six and seven because they're the only two I don't own. But it's just a pain in the ass. They're so bloody expensive still yeah. to pick up. Because I'd like to play them ones. Because I never. I've got four and five. They don't look great though, mate. Do they on the N64? No, really? no, no. This is the GameCube. Oh, the GameCube. Sorry. Yeah. The GameCube. That's where I started with them on the 64. Was the 64 yeah. ones. That yeah. caused many an arguments back in the day. <laughs> Especially when it's like, oh, and we're going to steal the star off of, like, you bastards. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. someone would end up with five stars at the end, and then everyone would be like, well, we'll like, take him down to one left or something. It's like all gang up on the same person. <laughs> but it, it's just great because, I mean, so what's daughter... the Wii U one like then? Is that good? Is that worth yeah, it? Yeah, well, there's, there's two, isn't there? They do Wii Party U, which I mm. think's really good, and then they do Wii Party 10. Um, sorry, Mario Party 10. That one, is it 10 or is it 9? Uh, it's 10. Yeah, it's 10. Yeah, that's not as good for some reason. They they, they changed the mechanics on it for some reason. I don't know why. Um, because then you have Mario Party 9 and 8, which were on the Wii. They're all right. I must admit, I was quite... Playing the GameCube version, the graphics don't look that bad. But going back to the Wii version, I don't know, they look a bit shoddy. They don't look as good, so the quality mm. was better on the GameCube than it was when they went to the Wii. So, but they did do a Wii U 
update of Mario Party 2, which was for the N64. And they've really polished the graphics up, and it's on the actual virtual store you can buy for about eight quid. Um, and that's not bad, actually. So, yeah. But as I say, it's it's good fun. I'm playing my Wii, uh, sorry, GameCube quite a bit at the moment. I found my Rocky. <laughs> Rocky. Rocky games. I'm going to fire that up this week and see if I can beat... Um, yeah. Uh, I, Ivan Draco. Oh, I've been bidding on that Namco Classics for the GameCube. That goes like 40, 50 quid, doesn't it? Wow. Yeah, a lot yeah, of the, the goes. Yeah, a lot of the GameCube stuff's really crept up in price. I looked. I have, I was trying to find my Mario uh, Sunshine, Mario Sunshine, mm. and I found that. And I just, I don't know. I was just looking on eBay for something. I thought I'd just type in. That's like a twenty-five pound game now. Yeah. It's gone up. Yeah. 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 It was like Metroid Prime was well expensive, wasn't it, before it was released on the virtual console? Mm. Uh, I actually but... looked to see how much my Resident Evil 4, the GameCube, was on eBay. Tenor. Go uh, yeah, that's gone down, isn't it, at the moment? <laughs> so Resident Evil 3 and 2 are the ones to go for on the GameCube. They're mm-hmm. ones worth... I haven't got 3 or 2. I've got 0 and 4, I think that's it. Yeah, that's what I've got. So, right, that's it. That's me done. Cool. Um, Dan? I won't take long, trust me. Cool. Uh, Resident Evil 7, did an hour of that, talked about it already. Tick. Um, other than that, just just a lot of Mario Kart 8 on the Excellent. Wii U, Splatoon, played some of that, that's pretty cool still. They've done a lot to, to um, they've done a lot to that actually. Have you um, pre-ordered the new Mario Kart then? I have indeed. Well, yeah. yeah, you've got um, new, it's a couple of new characters, it's just a, it's just a polished version of the uh, Wii well, U version, not, isn't it? With all the, the DLC battle, and that. Yeah. Yeah. DLC is a, <laughs> There's a Splatoon race course on there, I've noticed. Mm. And the Splatoon characters are there as well. So there's going to be little bits and bobs in the battle mode that's kind of sweet. So yeah. um, See, looking it's good forward that to that. That's taken off Splatoon. That is definitely another one of their new franchises that they're going to be running with, I think, for a while. Yeah. Mm. It is a good game. It is a good mm. game, no doubt about it. But yeah, I'm glad they've done the updated the balloon battle because I think Mario Kart would have been the perfect Mario Kart. But the balloon battle game on that was just awful. Yeah, just going yeah. round and round a track. I mean, you couldn't find anyone, could you? I hardly, t- hardly touched it. I played it for a little bit. Yeah. And it was a shit. So I moved yeah. on. It's all good though. I mean, there's still people playing it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, you can get to a game really, really quickly as well, which is good. Um, other than that, um, a bit of Street Fighter Five still. Uh, the new character was revealed early this week. Colleen. Who was it? Colleen, spelt with a. Is Colin spelt with a K? All oh, right, I, I knew that they were going to be announcing one. I didn't look into it though. It's yeah, not it's, that one that's like story Gilles mode handler, is it, or something? She's in the story the, mode. She wears that kind of like. Bird. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah, she's got oh, ice, ice attacks. Um, but apparently, all the rest of the characters in season two are brand new characters. There's no yeah, repatches of old ones. I swear to God, they do not want to put Gil in that game because I fucking hate that character. <laughs> like I will yeah, we'll have see. PTSD flashbacks <laughs> if he ends up in there. I, that was probably the cheapest character I've ever come across in oh, Street Fighter. Oh, it's the worst. What's your special move? I get all my health back. Woo! <laughs> yeah, Resurrection. Yeah, considering Brilliant. your your axe kicks that he chucks up every two seconds are basically as useful as uppercuts, you know what I mean? Just stop you jumping mm-hmm. in on him. Oh, what yeah. pain in the ass. But yeah, most street bosses are always cheap. But it's quite funny that pretty much every street fighter boss since M. Bison has made M. Bison seem like quite a decent opponent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've just been playing that a lot, uh, going online, getting my ass handed to me. Um, but using my, fight, my new fight pad, which is pretty sweet. In fact, all the fighting games I get now will be on the PS4. Um, just to keep it all on. on. Um, so I pre-ordered Tekken 7, which is due now in June. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's the way forward, really. I mean, as I said, they've got, I think, Marvel vs. Combat 3 has been announced for Xbox, but there's no point, really. And not with that shitty controller. Um, so, all good, man. And that's about it, really. I mean, I played modern sods here and there. I played mm. a bit of Peggle with Nathan last night. Oh, um, yeah, but that's about it, really. I've just been hey, very, very busy. Peggle. Huh? Who did it? I had someone oh dear Peggle. No, I said I, that's a great game, Peggle. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> I thought I had someone go, oh dear. No, oh dear, no, yeah. That's no, a great, it's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, super game. Couch, couch, couch co op, Peggle 2. <laughs> mm. Yeah, love It's all good, game. man. It's all good. But that's it, really. Um, 
I want to get back into a bit of Resident Evil 7, but um, I'm a little bit scared, especially when it's so dark <laughs> at this time of night. <laughs> same here, Dan, same here. It is scary. I, I saw the DLC was out, but I was like, mm, there's no point in me even picking that up until I finish the main game. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, Alex? Yeah, well, I'm always playing loads of games, but no big blockbusters like uh, Switch has been playing. Um, I'm still waiting to, to get the PS4 and the Switch, obviously. But, um, yeah, I'll keep it short then. Um, I've been playing Shantana Pirate's Curse. What an awesome game that is. Unbelievable. Um, you can get it on the PS4, I think, can't you? But uh, yeah, I think, I, I think what it makes did you pick great up on? on the DS, 3DS. Oh, right, cool. Yeah, it's quite hard to get hold of now. It's going for quite a bit of money, but um, I'm mm, really enjoying it? it. It's like a Metro- Metroidvania type game. So if you yeah. like Castlevania and Metroid, you're going to love oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there's lots of platforming. Recently released one on the PS4. Yeah, that's the latest one, isn't it? Yeah, it's all yeah. Like, it looks snazzy as hell, like sort of like in its presentation and everything. It's great. Yeah, I mean, the, the sprite animations are awesome. Really, really good. Great music. Um, yeah, it's just all round good game. The only thing I would say is you're a bit limited on sort of what you can do, sort of action wise. You can get a gun in it and upgrade it, but it does become a little bit useless. You just got your hair that you whip as a as a, as a weapon, and that's about it. But I think the story, the music, and the overall puzzle element makes it for a fantastic game. Really, really good. Yeah, I think they've done about five or six of them now, haven't they, in total? Yeah, well, the original one came out on the Game Boy, which goes for hundreds and hundreds of pounds now. Um, mm. um, but, yeah, it's a nice little franchise. I think I hope they keep that up. Really, really good. I I finished recently Fire Emblem Fates, which is a huge game. Mm. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, as you know, it's a tactical strategy game, turn-based game. But, I mean, I mean, it's nothing like XCOM, is it? It's nothing like um, Laser Squad. It, it, it's still missing, like, ranged attacks, which I love. You know where you can pinpoint your cross on a door so when an enemy walks through, he's going to get shot on these rounds. He, he's got nothing like that in it, and I do miss that. So you kind of end up going around the game in a big group. Of you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, if you do like your strategic shooters like that, and like with the XCOM esque element in there, if you do end up picking up a PS4, I highly recommend you pick up like Valkyria Chronicles. You can probably get it for about a ten. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that. pretty much the exact same thing. Grid based movement. Uh, if enemies pop out of cover, like in front of someone who's on like Overwatch, they'll just shoot at them. Yeah, I think I do yeah. prefer that style. I mean, Fire Emblem Face is a great story, and I think that's its main thing, really. Um, it's got the whole kind of rock, paper, scissor element, you know, mm-hmm. and the relations and the marriage. You can get married and sort of build your kids up to be powerful. So you sort of taking sort of um, stats from, you know, your wife's side and your side. Um, so that's quite fun, building up relationships in the game. But... Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. When you play games like XCOM, XCOM, it's just nowhere near as good as that. But well, I remember, oh, is, is that actually Nintendo, sorry, or is that like someone else who usually makes those? I think it's Nintendo you know, I, because I they just put out Nintendo because yeah. they put out that phone game, didn't they? Fire Emblem Fates Awakening. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's got yeah. Nintendo's no, name plastered all over it. So. Yeah, I'm wondering I mean, if this is their replacement for Advance Wars because we haven't had an Advance Wars. Well, yeah, that yet. was good as well. I did enjoy it. We haven't seen an Advance Wars for a while. And, you know, Fire Emblem, Fates, Fire Emblem has been out a long time. It's out on the Super Famicom. Mm. We didn't get, it didn't get big until Awakening, really, over here. And I think it's because maybe some of the characters have appeared in Smash Brothers as well. It's just kind of ballooned and got really popular, um, especially in the West. Well, I think it's always been really big in, in Japan, you mm. know, because it goes back quite a long way. Um, but, yeah, it's a fantastic game. It is a good game. But, you know, when you're a connoisseur of the kind of that kind of type of game, I think I prefer, you know, XCOM or even Advanced Wars, I think, is slightly better, really, you know. But, yeah, that was a good game. I mean, I'm always playing games. I'm in Splatoon. I've been playing Gunsmoke on the NES, trying to get to the finish of that game. That is such a good game. I mean, the arcade version of that is rock hard. 
And I, I wondered, how are they going to do this? How are they going to bring CNES? It's got three buttons. One to shoot left and right and shoot vertically, vertically upwards. So to, to shoot vertically upwards on the NES pad, you have to press both buttons at the same time, which is a bit of a ball ache after a while. Mm. You know, your arm's aching, but uh, it's a fantastic game. Yeah, speaking really of retro games, it. they recently released, uh, I saw, and I think it's like the PS4, might have been just around before Christmas, Wild Arms 2. Yes, yeah, that's I, right. I saw that for the PS4, but it's not Wild been yeah. released over here, is it? Wild no, it's, it's, it? yeah, it's it's on. I believe it's on the uh, marketplace. Oh well, yeah, but Wild no, Guns, but... you mean? No, I think it's... it's like called Wild Arms. It was like like Cabal, like sort of style game. We well, got a crosshair. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, you're moving guns. left and right. It's a, Wild Guns is a Super Nintendo game. Yeah, there is oh, a man. physical release, but it's not in the UK. It's another one of those where it's just in America, but you can down, you know, really? buy it. Yeah, yeah, there is a physical release. It's about £40. Yeah, I know pounds. it's a physical release. My mate's got it over here. I'm sure it's UK as well. I looked on... Well, I did look on Amazon the other week. So if you used to buy the Super Nintendo version, it goes for about 500 quid. Let's have a look. Wow. <laughs> right, anyway, let's let's carry on. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and I'm always playing arcade games, guys. I've been into my arcade games, so I'm trying to actually beat the world record on my Sheriff um, arcade machine. I'm trying to beat the main world record. I've currently got 78,000. Um, I'm about three levels away from beating the world record on, on Sheriff. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, that's hopefully going to happen in the next couple of weeks, so I'm always playing it. Um so, yeah, that's about it, guys, really. Nice. Loads wow, of retro. Cool. Hardcore retro, eh? Yeah, and new games, though. I do like new games. Like the game that Switch is on about, I'd love to play something like that because I loved On a Mission. I loved Dark Souls and um, Ninja Gaiden. That would be a good game to play. Mm. Sounds awesome. Mm. I was going to say, you could probably, if you're not necessarily after a pro, you could probably find uh, like, uh, an original OG PS4 for probably under 150 quid Yeah. nowadays, yeah. to be honest. They're oh, only 200 was, new. I was quite impressed with the VR as well, Switch, and I was wondering, what's the difference with the two different consoles? Does one use the VR better than the other? Is the Pro uh, better if, for the VR? Yeah, the, the Pro supposedly makes things in the VR run better and look slightly better, but I can't say I've really noticed a huge difference, to be honest. Mm. You're uh, not I seeing th- it in 4K, are you? When you? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. It, it's literally, I think, only 1080, like, the screens anyway, and then you've got to deal with, like, the resolution, like, being blown up because you're obviously so close to it as well yeah. on top of that. Yeah, I mean, out of all the games I played, so I played that um, Res as well, which it's not really me. I, I didn't get into that at all. But the Resident Evil one, I thought was awesome. I mean, yeah. they those sort of horror games don't make me scared. I always end up laughing. You know, I just find it funny when someone's trying to stab me. But yeah, um, if if you like your old arcade shooters and stuff like like your um, Virtual Cops and stuff like that, I can't recommend Until Dawn: Rush of Blood enough. Like mm. that is fantastic. Is it literally is just like an old arcade shooter, but in virtual reality? Yeah, yeah, I'll have to get that definitely. They were selling that actually at one point uh, in Argos, I think it was, for six pounds. Really? The games can be <laughs> so quickly, don't they? Yeah. Well, it was only a fifteen-pound game on release anyway, but mm. even so, when you see stuff like that for like six quid, you just think, holy shit. It's probably it's worth, worth six quid for just the box. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Right. Uh, if that's it, Alex, I want to just quickly roll off the questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Right. So uh, we've not had many questions this week because uh, I only put the link up on Facebook a short while ago saying that we were <laughs> recording tonight, doing my usual last minute stuff. Um, so, uh, Nikki Wilson says, what do you think of PS4 Pro boost mode? System seller or a load of toss? If people want it, then they sell it. So, you know. Well, no, this is just something that's included in the next firmware update, isn't it? 
Yeah, there's quite a few big things in the next firmware because they're doing external hard drive support for the PS4. I mean, even though it wasn't really a big issue, but to a lot of people, they didn't really want to start taking the hard drives out and just putting an external in. is is great, you know, for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you. I don't know what. What did you do with yours in the end then? Uh, switch or did you just buy one a new one? I just was... ended up upgrading to the Pro and then sticking the two terabyte in that. Oh, okay. So you got one in it anyway. Right. Yeah. Uh, but for myself, I mean, I'm still on the original. I could just go out and now and buy a two terabyte one and just you know plug it in, and I could just add even more games, you know, because then I'd have four four terabyte. But yeah, no, it's great, you know. But the um, the the graphic for the Pro, I think you're going to see this with the Xbox Scorpio when it comes out. You're you're going to get that same, you know, they're going to upgrade stuff. I mean, we're seeing it already, aren't we, on the Xbox? You're seeing like mm-hmm. the Xbox 360 stuff that's on the backwards compatible stuff that's coming through. I mean, they just released GTA four and they said that the, the graphics have been upscaled, you know, for it now. So it's just the way things are going to go isn't it. So I don't think it's, it's good for us. isn't it, if we want to play games and you want to play older games. Yeah, that's good if you've already got a uh, pro, but I still don't see the point in upgrading to a PS4 pro. If you already own a PS4 to be quite no. honest with you, I, unless I you've got a little... VR. Mm. Well, do you, prefer, do you prefer downloading games or buying the physical copy? Download or... all the way. It's really? the future. I, I'm physical. I'm the complete opposite. I will never touch download unless it's a no. little throwaway arcade game for like a few quid. But it's just you... effort having to get up to change the disc. Oh, you lazy! But was it an off. effort for your entire <laughs> beginning of your life having to change a cartridge or a disc? It's never been an issue until people just got really lazy about it. Well, that and it just and the, and discs just take up valuable space. You don't really own it, do you? No, no, not you digitally. Don't. No, no, never yours ever. And they can pull the plug whenever they feel like. If yeah, they really but want... they can pull the plug on a physical game because if you buy a physical game and you're not connected to the internet or whatever, you, you haven't downloaded the day one patch to make the game fucking well, playable well, anyway. Yeah, but that's the trouble with modern gaming, though, yeah. isn't it? I mean, yeah. they should have sorted the game out before they release it, and yeah. Nintendo always do that. Yeah, yeah and Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo yeah, I agree with that, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. it's unbelievable. There, there is stuff on the <laughs> PS4 that's come out that won't work unless it's had the day one patch i mean we know that but then that's the way it's going so i mean Mm -hmm. and also with certain stuff that's online only uh, my attitude now is that on certain stuff it was online only i'm not going to buy it or i'm if i'm going to buy it i'll play it on the disc i've had that attitude and then i'm going to get rid of it need to speed yeah it's like oh is that online it doesn't need to be fuck you then right if you want to do that yeah um for yeah, it, not buying, not interested in, because it's online only. It's yeah. got a single player though to it. Yeah, but it's on. No, but if you read on the book, online only. You have mm-hmm. to be connected to God. the internet to get it to work. Not buying. Bye bye. This is all right for certain stuff, I guess. Every now and again, if it's an MMO or it's an online game, I can understand it. Stuff like the division, I can understand that you're connecting to an online server because you're sort of in a world. Even though if you're doing the stuff on your own, it shouldn't be an issue. But it's something that the, the actual companies themselves are forcing, and generally, again, I know I keep banging the same drum, it's mainly American developers. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. Nintendo have sort of gone back, and they've gone back to cartridges. Yeah. yeah, I was quite pleased with that, actually. I was just like, yeah, yeah bit of cartridge again. I mean, at the end of the day, like, the, the little Vita cartridges are so cool, and then I, yeah. I even like, like the 3DS cartridges and stuff as well. Yeah. <clears throat> okay uh, next question is from Chris Dixon so I've convinced myself that the Scorpio will come bundled with an Oculus headset and a price tag to make your eyes water the main reason for this assumption is that pretty much nothing has been said about VR on the Xbox I love a conspiracy discuss um, I don't think o- Oculus will come with the Xbox Scorpio I think it will be Oculus compatible though um, but I, I, I do think that it's just going to be f- so expensive and I don't really think many people are going to trump up that amount of money for it, to be honest. So do you think they're going to go for a VR route or whether they're going to go for like the augmented reality? Um, both. Because they've got their own Microsoft augmented reality thing, haven't they? Yeah, but they're going to launch that on PC as well, aren't they? So 
you know, that's, well, yes. that's, well, there that's is how no, Microsoft are going. They're like kind of. There is no split between the yeah. consoles and PC now. It's just Windows. Yeah, like, my, as a brand. Yeah, because because Microsoft are like, yeah, Xbox and PC. It's the same fucking thing now. Um, so that's it. Which is quite good if you buy a game, you can play it on both. But if you own a PC, you're not gonna, you're still not gonna pay fifty quid for say Halo Wars. You're gonna jump on to say on to G G two A and pick it up for twenty five quid. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's just just a bit pointless. Um, and the last question is: Having just finished Resident Evil Seven, this is from Nigel. What do you think? about the changing directions the game series has taken well needed yeah mm. definitely i mean i played like about an hour of six and i was just like this is shit i finished six <laughs> and that was a hard game to finish because <laughs> it's just a nightmare that game i mean five was fine i enjoyed five finished five enjoyed five six oh god Actually, no, tell a lie. Shit's too harsh a word, to be honest. I think I was just like, I'm just, I was just tired of it by that point. It was too, it was too, um, it was too um, ambitious and it couldn't, it did the walk but couldn't do the talk. They did the talk but couldn't do the walk. That's probably the best way of saying it. It was um, messy. It turned into a Michael Bay film, didn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah, it was, there was, there were those moments that was brilliant. There's other moments we were like, God, this is a mess. Mm. Um, bit sad really but you know less than that best though it? four's always been yeah best. four yeah I've never finished four. four i need to well, finish that is... it that's on my list to finish this year four. yeah oh, dear, actually that did you get interesting thing uh to find out which game has gone through the most changes that have been well received because obviously we've had two with resident so far mm. it's changed twice i think vr is a good uh a medium for resident <clears throat> evil though don't you I think any first-person game is a fantastic medium for VR. Really? Well, if it's too fast, though, I think you could get motion sick. That's why I'm thinking, like, Resident Evil is a slow-paced game, so it kind of gets you adjusted a lot yeah. easier. I want That's Rambo all. in VR. You wouldn't, want, <laughs> sure. you wouldn't want something like Serious <laughs> Sam, would you? <laughs> yeah, but you think about it, like, Rambo, you're in the forest and you've got to shoot everyone. I mean, it'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, there we go. There we go. Right, that is the end of the show, everybody. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, Thanks, pretty much us. finished on time, which is great. So, uh, from me, Mark Webb, Gamer Tag, Piss on ID, Steam ID, Webby317. And from me, Sensei Switch. And from me, Number One Stuntmaster. Going to milk a cow, said my dad. And from me, Alex. Thanks for having us on. So thank you very much. Don't forget to visit the website mojo-interactive.net. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at mojo underscore int. You can find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash mojo interactive. So thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.